to everybody with their dice now, right? Like that's gonna be. The oh thing. yeah, whoever whoever wins this month does. By the way, it, it, you'll get this nice raw counterfeit egg. So look forward to that. Have you seen the packaging that we use? It's it's like a Manila envelope. <laughs> like, you know what? Whatever. Fuck it. Do it. Who cares? Uh, so last time on Curse of Strahd, uh, having finally completed or to the best of your knowledge, searched every single nook and cranny of the Amber Temple, you all absconded to um, or back out into the mountains, down the path that you had taken to arrive at the temple itself. Following the river, you once again approached that swampy ruin that was the city of Berez, once a another town or principality in the in Barovia, flooded by the very wrath of Strahd himself. Finding your way across the river, you made your way to a set of standing stones where you went and met an individual who you immediately recognized or immediately was aware of you uh, as one of the raven kind. After a brief exchange, she warned you about what was across the river and all of you made camp for the evening. Some slept better than others. So as the dawn approaches, that mist pouring in, even heavier now in this swampy, ice-cold water, as the sun first begins to touch it. What are we all doing? I think first order of business is trying to figure out a way across this river, yeah? Yeah. I still think we can just go up and float down and back. Save some energy. My friends, are your memories so fragile that the events of the Great Durango Fortescue have simply blown themselves away? <laughs> it is but a, but a trivial feat for the Great Durango Fortescue to take you across this river. Yeah, and but pipes up with a bit of a cold, <clears throat> cold breath, as he just says, uh, "I uh, may be able to save you some time there. Energy, no need to force us to fly." Durango just broadly gestured toward the river with a smile. All right, <clears throat> let's give it a shot. Tins is going to. Uh, walk over to. <clears throat> well, first he's gonna see if he can find like a uh, like a puddle of some sort. That's fairly large. Like a like a portion of the water that is condensed away from it. Because you said we're in kind of like a marshy area, right? Uh, correct. The uh, the river itself runs pretty parallel to the ground, so it doesn't take much for it to flood. The whole area around is very swamp. Okay. Ridden. <clears throat> Uh, Tins is going to pull out a set of marbles, uh, four small ones that he begins to kind of like spin around in, in his palm before they begin to make a soft vibrating hum. He's going to place his hand into, uh, into one of these puddles and it will begin to freeze kind of in a thicker, like almost two inch layer of ice, big enough to fit, theoretically, all of us. <clears throat> and he will uh, then just kind of look at you all and we could um try to carry it or uh i could attempt to move it or if necessary i could try and do it at the river's edge and just float like we talked about doing I'm not going to be the first one to test it. He's got like 100 pounds of armor on. You think two inches of ice is going to hold him up? I can make it thicker. I tell you what, actually, it, it, the cold don't seem to bother you much no more, yeah? Yeah. I can test it out for everybody. 
Might be smart. I guess we can try to carry this ice chunk to the river. Durango looks suggestively at the two party members with positive strength scores. Oh god, I'm one of those, aren't I? Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tins yeah. will be sure to look at the both of you as well. Oh yeah, well, uh, so uh, I know how you move furniture, so yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go into the front of the thing and kind of and just lead the the front end around how, to the river. How wide are you making this? Um, let's see. We said it was about two inches. Uh, we'll say eight foot in diameter. Eight feet. Okay, in diameter. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're only uh, testing make... it on one person first. Sure, make uh, make strength. Make Saving strength. Grows. Strength checks. Make strength. Make make with the strength, the two of you. <laughs> As I try to calculate how much weight eight feet of two inches of ice can hold. I'll never let go, uh, Jack. <laughs> so yeah i i would say you know with a 14 19 the two of you are uh pretty easily although it's uh you know with the with the thickness of it it's not as wobbly as you would think it would be uh you manage to pick it up and bring it over to the river's edge uh sliding it in carefully into the water that you can see the current is attempting to oh there's no need to i can just move the water from the river to pull it like okay. bring the tide in and then bring it back out so as he begins to control the water, you can see this almost eddy forming around this ice. That is uh, where the where the river is trying to flow around it, and it's, it is this area is still. And I'm going to do so. what I can with shape water to try and like redirect it to make it not push quite as hard on that flow of ice. Ash, <clears throat> attempt to stand on. The ice. Make an acrobatics check for me. Oh, uh, okay. Can I can I make it better by making little footholds in it? Because I can just I can just adjust. Uh, twenty. You muted. I'm guessing he's walking to the center. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do that. Right. <laughs> yeah. She's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Yeah, the twenty. Uh, so you you position, up. yeah, kind of position your body weight in a way that you can you can get a, a decent buoyancy on, and even get to the middle where you can you can stand up pretty firmly. You hear the most gentle of creaks as you step in, and the ice itself begins to push down into the water. With Tenzvedov trying to move the water around it, you can see that the buoyancy is just like bits of water kind of coming up on the edges. You, you don't think it's going to get more than one of you? Okay, then I'll, I'll just give you it. that. I'll thicken it, and we'll do it one at a time. How much? Uh, we'll get it another two inches. Another two inches, okay. Uh, so as that ice begins to thicken in place there along the along the shoreline, uh, it does seem to taper out, although it's still sinking a little bit, and the water is still kind of just barely flowing over the top of it. It looks it. like it could at least support all of you. <laughs> now you have to get in this this ice dome, this inverted ice dome. All right, I, I have to I, against all odds. This might this uh, might work. I would have a plan to. Uh, I think the backup plan is Durango. If the ship breaks, you're gonna to want to grab Cole. Otherwise, he's gonna sink like an anchor. Yeah, you know, Orango, this looks so chintzy. You just want to. The battle force, Sir Cole, Mr. Means. Ash. Do not uh, take it personally, uh, Mr. Tens. I understand in some cultures it is customary to wear suspenders and a belt. No, and with that, he launches into a mandolin riff and uh, yeah, grabs Cole and takes him across. <clears throat> Using fly. Yeah. Uh, how long does... Uh, what's it? A uh, minute? What, did we discuss this last week? Either nine uh, or ten. I'll look it up. It's either one or ten. Yeah, I can't remember. I can never remember. 
conditions, man. Um, so <laughs> don't ask me to know things. Yeah. Uh, Cole's gonna like put arms outstretched and kind of do like 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 the Jesus pose as he crosses the, <laughs> the river. Concentration up to ten minutes. Okay, perfect. So. Uh, I would say with time not being a major factor, you're very easily able to leverage coal and take him across the river. Tensveta, ice uh, water bending yeah, with uh, with Jay uh, with as you're marbles. trying to maneuver and shape the water um, to get you across. It takes probably three to four times the amount of time. I'd say probably almost... 20 minutes to try to slowly maneuver this large ice wheel Flow. across the river, but you, like a chicken, make it to the other side. <laughs> that fun. Well, it was much less in terms of uh, energy than anticipated. I mean, we just could have got, you know. Mm. I'm just saying you might have made a mountain of a molehill. It also could have made it a lot easier for us to escape by keeping track of whether or not he can continue to use that. And he will just kind of like snap his jacket closed and start marching towards the... Where are we going? Where? Who? Where Great question, going? because as you, as you touch down... This particular side is even spongier than the other, right? Your feet sink into soft mud that is cold, soaking into your boots in your travel gear or your armor, if you will, uh, for all except for Ash. He doesn't seem to mind the cold. There is a cluster of ruined cottages poking out in the mist. You can just barely make out their decrepit forms, and you've seen them before from the other side. These low stone walls over this short stretch of dirt road that has somehow remained partially intact. So we're using the goats as a distraction, or what are we doing here? Would you like me to go and see what there is first? It's fairly quiet. Yeah, you just be aware of scarecrows. They're, they're the ones looking out, yeah? They're the uh, sentinels. Pretty sure I could get away. I can come with you if you need a second set of eyes. I think I'm okay. All right, well... Come if you scream, then. Uh, Tins is going to, like, as quietly as he possibly can, start checking out the individual places, individual uh, cottages. Um, sure. Go ahead and feel free to move your token. As soon as he's out of earshot, Ash turns to Cole. If he screams, he's now the distraction. We should probably go the other way. Like around. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. You could do the, right. you know, jump away thing, right? Yeah, he's fine. I don't know that I care. Tenseta, make a perception check for me. Uh, 17. Okay. So with the 17, as you begin to look around through these ruined cottages. The only thing that remains in the interior is these rotten stone walls, bits of decrepit wood where flooring might have once been, whatever furniture left scattered into rotten rubble and slowly devoured by the swamp underneath. Uh, as you get closer in, even in the cold air, insects begin to buzz around uh, seems to swarm around you as you move through. It's it's nothing you haven't dealt with before in the, the Feywilds or, or in this sort of environment, but um, they are noticeably around, whereas they weren't on the other side of the river. 
and peering over you several feet in the air. Through the fog, you can see one of those shapes that stuffed mannequin-like scarecrow attached to a large wooden pole just hanging. Several, it's maybe, you know, maybe 200 feet to your north. Let me check something real quick. Hmm, never mind. Um, how long does that last? It only lasts a minute. Okay. Tins is just going to continue on his merry way, staying close to the shadows. Whenever the th fog gets thick, duck into it to try and you know, stay out of eyesight of the bags of bullshit hanging on poles. So you make your way sort of creeping stealth. Why don't you make a stealth check for me? Seventeen. Was well, almost that four though. Yeah. <laughs> so as you are making your way, sort of hugging these decrepit, moss-covered walls, these remains of whatever town and life had been there. You feel under your feet a crack. Something hard, like a stick or a twig. It snaps underfoot. It doesn't make a lot of noise, but you feel it. I look down and see if it was an actual twig or if it was something else. And you look down and you, as you put your face closer to the ground, still trying to stay silent uh, as you see bits and pieces of uh, some humanoid skeleton, the remainder of a rib bone, perhaps even femur, as it snapped underfoot. but somewhere deep in the muck. Paying it no mind, you look up and you see another one of those scarecrows perched high on one of those poles. As you look at it, it looks like a normal scarecrow. You're, it doesn't seem to be anything otherworldly. It's just staring out empty black holes in a straw-filled linen bag. Continue on. I think we're gonna get to probably this one and get as good of a look around before we start heading back. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for, from this vantage point, uh, with your and I'll still give you your seventeen. Um, In the middle of what looks to have been the town square at one point is a ramshackled wooden hut built on a stump, what looks to be the remains of some enormous tree. The rotting roots of the stump thrust up from the mire like the legs of some sort of gigantic insect. Through the fog, you can just barely see a light from a doorway on one side of the hut. It's something in the something looming in the distance, floating outside of it. It's difficult to make out with the thick fog in the distance. It's maybe 400 feet or 300 feet. Um, I'm sorry, no, just yeah, maybe 250 feet ish to your northwest. To the south and southwest, you see a few more of those linen sacks peeking up, dotting the miscovered fields of this swamp, and a larger ruin, a little raised up off the ground. And the just barely through the fog can you make out the, the wooden spikes that you were looking for. And you can hear it now, the subtle 
bleeding of goats. Mm -hmm. Nah. <laughs> Subtle. Do we know what this structure is over bleeding. here? Bleeding. Which one? Off to the west. This over here. Uh, you can't really make it out from where you're at, to be perfectly honest. Although I think when you guys were fleeing, you might have gone by it. It looked a, much like everything else here. It looked like another larger, but it, it, most of it was ruined stone. So it okay. looks like the remains of some other ruined structure. We're going to start making our way back then. Okay. And, you know, again, sticking to the shadows, quietly making the way back doing everything he can to stay quiet before he gets to the wall. Like, as soon as he gets to about this part of town, he'll hit the river and just follow. Um, okay. Ash, you see it first, something through the mist, a shape down by the river. As soon as I see them physically within about 60 feet, I'm just going to hit whoever's closest mentally and just go, it's me. It's me. Ash lowers the bow. I know I still think I should have shot you. Again. Oh no, that was cold. Never mind. Yeah, it was. I, um... I don't know if the goats will be far enough away from the center house to be an entirely effective distraction. I think we need to come up with something secondary. Can we just burn burn the thing out of its house? I was thinking of that or the scarecrows. I, I, I have, I'm of the same mind, Cole. We take out the one that's furthest east. This one that's closest to us to the river. And then possibly try and make the goats get loud at the same time. My friends, I hate to I hate to, you know, put the uh, put the stop on this idea, but it is quite wet and damp here, no? Perhaps starting a fire is not as easy as it may seem. <laughs> so ruin it. I can make things dry, can't you? Well, that does require a certain degree of, how do you say, proximity? <laughs> how close to these things do we wish to get? Hey, did it look like they were looking around or just sort of standing there? JD, do I, did it look like they were looking around at all? We didn't see any movement. They just looked like scarecrows. Just like scarecrows. But... Who did, who did she say? I can't remember. It's been a week. Who did the Were Raven say that the uh, lady in the hut looks through around that space? Because I vaguely remember her, her saying that she's, she is somehow connected to the scarecrows. Okay. Could take out one, the rest would come. Well, she would come at least. We might be able to catch her out here. Or could wow. take out one like way off? And then I'll scurry around to another one while they're going to investigate that thing. That's what I'm saying. To get rid of the one that we're closest to, go through the village, go down south, hit the, hit the goats, have two distractions. Oh. But anything, Ash? I mean, I, I don't know if we got anything on the table. I mean, really, we should only... We're only going to want the one distraction. And... From there, either we're going to want to attack, or we're going to want to get... We're either going to want to get her on by herself, or get her out of her stronghold, but then we're going to have to deal with the rest of the scarecrows, probably. So we could just set up a fire in one of these old buildings. That's the distraction. We don't have to worry about drying out a bunch of wood a second time. What's, what, what, what's the worry about the scarecrows, other than the fact that she uses them as vision? The way to see things connected the connectivity there well the only we thing won't. i can come up with is throwing them at us frankly speaking yeah, i yeah, think we just want to get as close 
It's a big village, mate. We're just trying to get as close as we can. That's what I'm saying. Without her, like, get, getting the jump on us, you know? So that's the thing with the scarecrows. We can't be seen with them or near them or by them. What didn't the scarecrows follow us around the last time we went through here? No. Or am I imagining that? Well, frankly speaking, the imagination does go far and wide from time to time. Whatever. Whatever we gotta do, we gotta do quick. I feel like if we're gonna do the two pronged approach, two of us, one of us lights the scarecrow, or one group will light the scarecrow, another group takes care of the goats, and then we pins remove the hut. I don't know that we necessarily have to take care of a goat or even touch a goat if we can just get close enough to make them startled. Yeah, Ringo, I'll do you have anything that you could do at a distance with them? I, yeah, I could shoot it with an arrow. Okay, I'm not trying to kill a goat today. Uh, I'm not trying Perhaps, to kill My friends, this is a task best left to the great Durango Fortress Gilm. You will find there is no greater expert in all the land in the fine art of startling goats. It's a very strange art to be proud of. No, he's, he's got ribbons for it. It's a thing. I, I don't know why it's a thing, but it is. I do not mm. understand the contest these villagers hold at their fairs, but I am exceptionally talented in many ways. You know, I tend to agree. Things are wrong. Materialists are wrong. So, so, so we set this distraction. What's a, what's a way in? So, um, tens, draw, draw over here in the muck, uh, sort of uh, the layout you saw. And he will. He will yeah, take yeah. a moment and kind of like, um, you know, use mage hand to pick a fi poke a finger in the mud and move it around and do his best to make a artist rendition of the space, even using shape water to make a small river next to it. And Cole's gonna take a couple, just like uh, little loose pebbles from around the ground, and 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 make the four of us, and um, and some just whatever other grasses or stuff that's around to kind of lay out the houses with them. So where on here are you are you thinking about starting the fire, and where do we approach? So, so here's yeah. here's my thought. Set this guy on fire, right? Then that will keep the attention of, theoretically, these two. Right? At least. Then we make a goat yell. That will get the attention of these three. Now then, with her distract with her attention distracted between those two events, we could come up straight through the center up behind through the village and hit her directly and to be clear we're trying to take her out yeah we're not trying to take this um we could this... try and just go no it, i mean that's the thing if she leaves we don't even have to touch her we just need the rock right which could be on her if it's on her well, we, we won't know unless we go find out i can't throw my vision in a distance durango can you I'm afraid that my eyes are firmly fixed in my head, Mr. Tense, but otherwise, what might I say? This is a most masterful plan, ladies and gentlemen, the clever Tenzveta Neotam, and he looks towards Ash and Cole, clapping lightly, encouraging them to. Tens just kind of like stone faces. Thank you. I don't think the entertainment world's cut out for him. You know, he just it doesn't seem thankful at all. That was cold. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, you know, well, mm. yeah. I was gonna say it is that time. Um, so for good team, hands in. <laughs> One last thing before we go all out on this: what do the teams look like? Because I know of only two of us that can really start a fire. Easily. Um, Chuck, I forget if you got. I was gonna say Chuck, I forget, but I know me and Durango are the only ones with prestidigitation, which can. I I kicked it off for shape of water last night. Do we? We don't want to go that far away from each other. This is a very, very, very large map. The other thing. <laughs> I 
I say we all go as a group. We light this one, that that one right there on fire. We do it in the same order, but we just all go as a group. So you light that one on fire, potentially drawing them down that field over there. While they're being drawn that way, we're making our way downwards towards that secondary group with the goats to distract them. I don't think we need that second distraction. I don't know if we do point. either. I don't know if we do either. I don't either, but Tins does. I still say we just light the one on fire, take the opening that it gives. The problem Damn. that I see with that is that the attention will be drawn in that direction from all scarecrows. Assuming that she's going to be looking through, if not only paying attention to the ones that are to the north, that still leaves the others to be able to report. Right? Yeah, but they're seen... like, you know, 500 feet from where we're going to be. Right. That doesn't mean there's an open field between the village and the hut that we're trying to get to. Getting their attention split in either direction would confuse her enough to at least step out the front door, I would think. Wait, can't you make yourself invisible? Me? Yeah. You were invisible the one time. I yeah, remember. no, that was that was because our friend the uh the the uh Dusk Elf made me invisible. No, 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 back back at the the orchard when we were fighting the tree people because Durango fucking fried you with lightning bolt or something. No, Durango made me invisible. Oh. As you're saying that, Durango just disappears. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, uh -huh. alternatively, somebody could loop around, get the far one so they're pointing away, go invisible. And then make their way. I could also make a rather decently sized distraction, but it'll be illusory. I don't know if she'll be able to see through it. Uh, I mean, I'm, f I'm fine with the two distractions. It's fine. But what's going to happen is that as soon as we put one on, on alert, they're all going to go on alert anyway. Right. So we need to have some semblance of a. So by the time we get to the area trying to let go of those goats, those scarecrows are probably all going to be on alert, making it harder to release the goats. Right, so they need to go off simultaneously. Mate, I'm, we cannot be that far away from each other. If one of us gets caught out, we're dead. We need all four of us together for the fight. And if this cool. goes sour, which it could... It could. We can't be that far away from each other, mate. Unless you can get get to us like that, and I can't get me that close to you that quick. quick. I'm fairly quick. You can run yeah. a thousand uh, feet. Hands, can, why don't you make an intelligence check for me? I can run 180 feet in a turn. Oh, it's only eight turns. That's less than a minute. 14. Yeah, so with a 14, I would tell you that... It, the only thing that does start to cross your mind with that, and you're like, and you know that you can move quickly. Durango is already invisible. You know that Cole and Ash don't have the best eyes as it is, and the mist here is very thick. It's hard to see 10, 20 feet in front of you. Now, if something were up high, you might be able to catch it. What do you mean, something up high? You know, you like, can see into the sky fairly, oh. you know, fairly easily, right? You can see the scarecrows kind of peeking out the top of the mist. But... Um, Cole's just gonna start moving towards the first scarecrow, assuming that's where Durango would have been, <laughs> would have been headed. Uh, by a hand, uh, kind of grabs Cole's shoulder, shoulder out of nowhere, and voice by his ear says, "Now, Mister Cole, I know that it is not easy to." to sneak about in these heavy garments that you favor, but I do recall sometimes we were exceptionally stealthy when we were making our escapes. Perhaps you could recreate this again. Have an inspiration die. Okay. Help with your stealth roll. Give it a shot, mate. Uh, yeah, so Cole's gonna try to buckle down as much of what's loose on him and 
kind of unlace anything that doesn't need to be on the armor that's so it's not clanking around for you know 30 40 episodes and <laughs> and uh sneak in the fog dm could i use shape water to condense the fog around us to give us some semblance of oh. help what's the uh how much space it's only five, five foot cube, cube but it's not it's not going to be able to cover four yeah yeah if you want to do it okay. for if you want to say give one person help sure i mean but I then they would all they it. also wouldn't be able to see through it yeah. so, um ben that was an inspiration I... die yeah d6 okay one d6 Oh, it's not bad. Nine. Uh, that is fifteen total. Oh, we're doing this. Yes, we're doing it then. Okay. So as all of you begin to sneak, go ahead and get yourselves into per. Where? Where is it? Which one are you trying to start the fire with first? I think we're going here. Here. Are we all going at the same time, or are we going to do the things at the same time? All right. Uh, about table, I really don't want to split the group that far apart. Eight rounds okay. is a lot of time for somebody to die. Splitting the party is generally um, the stuff of folly and disaster, no? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you can always identify a, a, a DM playing in a game because they almost always split, split the, the party. party. I don't know what it is. Like, they know it's the worst thing to do, but we do it every time. But we do it all the time. I mean, like, in this case, like, the plan would make sense to split the party. It, it, you guys. it would, but I promise you, one bad dice roll and somebody <laughs> dies. I, I oh, agree. yeah, no, for sure. So I say we just the, stick the with the one. Thing... The one distraction. I, th I think that's... Oh, okay. what's, what's up, Chuck? Up, Chuck is puke. But I can theoretically cast Shape Water and Detect Thoughts at the same time to make it to where I don't have to see where I'm going by detecting whoever I'm with and going in that direction. Like a dowsing rod, right? What does Shape Water have to do with somewhere. it? To make the fog, the fog go down around me to get the help, get the help there. I can go pretty much wherever I need to, and probably theoretically not get caught. Oh, Especially, I'm the one. Yeah, they're gonna hear the, me if anybody. Yeah. You're the problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, oh man, if the only other thing I could think of would be to use the rope that none of us ever use and tie a rope around your waist, and then just keep the fog down around you while somebody holds on to the rope low and just kind of tugs you along well i'm already uh, i'm already scooting so <laughs> no, no, we're already moving let's go stealth checks dm yeah i think i already have one from cole right mm-hmm mm -hmm. oh, right, as the uh, as the party starts moving durango reappears that was just a shits and giggles invisibility. <laughs> and it's uh, an 11, yeah? Mm -hmm. Um, We are going to... Uh, we're going to throw a luck point on that stealth roll. So that was not... Man, ratcheting uh, down all that clanky armor never, really paid off. This has never, it's never bitten you before. <laughs> Am I the stealthiest I one right now? Yeah. I don't, I don't think that Durango's luck has ever helped him. In it combat, once. it saved my ass once or twice. It That's, has at least yeah. once. Outside of that, yeah, useless. So <laughs> at least one. All of you begin to move quietly, although it is difficult to see where you're stepping. The mist and fog on top of the mushy, marshy ground and that ice-cold water that seeps up with every step it becomes difficult. Cole, you are, you've battened down your armor, you're doing everything you can to move stealthily and quietly. You've done this before. They taught you this in training, right? You had to wear armor, but you also had to move quietly in certain certain times, so you know what you're doing. And with a little bit of help, you continue to do so. 
You won't move as quietly as you think you do, although as you as you head in the which direction are you heading? Let me let's go there first. Pretty sure we're going. Yeah, towards that top this right. Most... <laughs> yeah. Okay. So moving as quietly as possible. You approach that scarecrow, which now as you get closer and closer within well, were we saying 20, 30 feet? How close are we getting to this thing? In order for me to make it drier, so that way it can actually catch fire, um, I need to be within 30 feet. Okay. So as Ash, you get to that... Ash will hold up at about 100 feet. Can I see the, the scarecrow from where I'm at at about 100 feet? I would say through the fog, it's difficult to see the entirety of the scarecrow, but you can see that that head peeking out, that linen bag that is looking off somewhere to the northeast. Okay, gonna have it, you know, get tell everybody to crouch down. Hands, hmm? you're the sneaky one. Get up there, dry it out. Then I can hit it with an arrow, and we can light that on fire. That'll trigger the rest of it. So all we need you up there is to dry out. We can do everything else from a distance. Then we can skedaddle on out here. He's going to look at uh, Durango and just go, Can't to make me unseeable? Are we ready to witness the astounding feats of the great Durango Fortescue? <laughs> just cast the spell. Like, with the strings muted with his left hand, Durango's just playing like the lightest, the lightest little plunk, plunk, plunk on his mandolin as he uh, casts invisibility on, on Zinveta. It's it's just, it's the sneaking Looney Tune sound. <laughs> <laughs> but with like some pitch harmonics and like, you know, some fancy shit thrown in. Um, And we will use Shape Water to kind of like as I'm moving towards it, I'm going to get like my bearings on where it's at. And then I'm just going to like pull the fog down around as well. Nope. That'll break invisibility. Never mind. I'm just going to go. Fuck it. Um, while he's doing that, Ash is going to wrap the arrow. Like he's going to take some of the, the winter clothes that he's got, take some of the cloth off of it, kind of pierce the arrow with it and wrap it around the arrow a little bit to, give it a little more combustive ability um about 60 feet from him tens will turn invisibly and kind of like send a telepathic message to him and just say you will see me when it is dry run and then he's gonna go the last well, I can't give you I can't give you extra advantage but go ahead and give me another stealth check with advantage take it 24 24 okay great so as he kind of like gets close he's gonna pull he's gonna reach into that pouch where the marbles are he's gonna grab those those like three or four marbles that are there and begin to kind of like as he gets down low he's gonna get as low as he can into like a pile of brush and begin to just like feel them vibrate in the air as he kind of like pulls that fog down through it and like almost makes the fog disappear from around that space as he's just going to pull it straight down to the ground to condense it all in one spot okay give me because as you, as you approach now mm -hmm. moving within that 60 feet that heavy fog looming across you get to that wooden stake you can see it, you follow it rise up with your distance, but at the top of it now, there's no scarecrow. Make a perception check for me at disadvantage. Uh, I don't like this. Chrissy, wake up. 20. Chrissy, wake up. <laughs> you, you feel, though you're invisible, vulnerable in that moment because it was unexpected. You can feel your heart start to beat loudly in your chest in this moment of anxiety. And as your eyes dart across the fog and across this small clearing to find a hint 
of where this thing could be, you suddenly see this shape sort of looming slowly and moving, almost searching through the high grass. And as it gets closer and closer to you, it doesn't seem to see you. Standing perfectly s- still, you can see it creeping now. This shape, this these elongated arms with these big hooked claws that look like bent and broken sides scraping against the mud as it just creeps along quietly through the grass. This lifeless linen face, almost sewn mockingly, stuffed with raven feathers poking out little pizza, uh, pieces of rotten cloth i'm not going to s- move just moving slowly through the through the grass i'm going to let it get i'm going to see if it goes past me a few painful how long does visibility last it lasts an hour invisibility okay. is a full hour okay okay Greater is ten is is a minute. So for all of you, time for the rest of you, time sort of slows down. Why don't we do this? Let's go ahead and roll initiative. (sighs) You know, just to get it out there, you know. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Uh huh. Get it Uh over with. There's no combat encounter in the currently viewed scene. Uh, Oh, I'm I'm so sorry. Mr. Siafi Pants. Why is it that the rogue with the supposedly high initiative never goes first? I am the rogue now. Look at me. I'm the paddle rope now. <laughs> look at me. Look at me. <laughs> All right, Jay, that one got me. So, uh... <laughs> so I'm going to say, is this is this is happening, right? A whiff of, of white, almost almost greenish yellow smog, just permeates, and in that moment, that flash, Ash, you see that the scarecrow is suddenly gone as well. From your vantage point, you can see that just a wooden stake now. The suddenly the bag has disappeared. No sign of Tensveta. Something's wrong. We need a fan out and move forward. Um, and hoping that they take his lead. Ash is gonna go off in. 45 away from where he saw Tens go, or assumed where Tens went straight forward. Um, probably out 30 feet to the to the south-ish, or, you know, directly west. Ash is going to be, like, south of where Tens was with the Scarecrow. And try to keep with a 30-foot spacing away from Cole and Durango. So as all of you start to circle around from where that stake was, where you saw it, where you believe Tens was headed, you start to move through. And this side of the road now, as you cross, the reeds in the grass is tall, almost as tall as you, Ash, reaching almost four and a half, five feet into the air. Big cat's tails, those, those... Horn dog looking things are just kind of waving right in the mist. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? For the, for those of you who don't know what they are, don't eat don't eat them. But they're, they're not, sort not, of, not everybody calls them cat's tails. I know. I know. Right, I know. Right. I don't I know. remember what other people call them. I don't remember. Me neither. What I couldn't think of it. Either. I couldn't they're think of it. Calling it a corn dog looking thing in the middle of a tense scene. But everybody knows what I mean. <laughs> the corn dogs hung sinisterly in the fog. <laughs> <Yes>. Thank you. <laughs> I'll edit that in. <laughs> and as the yes, yes, as the spectral corn dogs float to and fro, <laughs> blocking your vision as they do. Ash, with your passive perception, you start to see it too. You can see this shape moving. It's hard to tell what it is. You can just barely see it through the, the tall grass. 
Tensveta, it passes maybe ten feet in front of you, looming step at a time. This this linen head just rotating impossibly and at odd angles as it searches through the the reeds. I need the other four to make another stealth. Check the other for three? Me. The other three, I'm sorry. Stealth check. Stealth Special check. Special guess, I was kidding. <laughs> Oh no, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. no. Naughty, naughty dice. God, jeez. And ten, as you suddenly see that head whip around, as you hear it too. A similar crack as the one you, you felt before. Something cracks underneath Fuck. your foot, Ash. I freeze this... and my eyes come down head level with the top of the grass. I just trained on it, uh, holding my action for if I see that thing get within 15 feet of me. Okay, so question. I just remember this. Chainmail doesn't impose disadvantage on stealth, right? It's just like the other two, right? Mail and uh, it's plate and half plate, isn't it? Plate and half plate, I think, are impose the disadvantage. I, I don't chain, technically I have... Think, I think chainmail does too. Hold on. Does it? Chain, chain might. Yeah. All right, I'll have to roll again then. Hold on. Uh, no, actually, it doesn't say that it does. Yeah, so it but it is heavy armor. I think chainmail does. Uh, the wearer has disadvantage on stealth checks. Okay. Chain okay. shirts don't. Gotcha. Yeah, that's where I got. Okay. Well, well, let me roll one more time. Okay, so that's a nine on stealth instead of uh, a fourteen. <clears throat> Either way, Tenzveta, you see that face turn. And in a very quick moment, just dart forward with, with blinding speed as it just begins to take off. For the rest of you, you suddenly, through the darkness, through the fog, this horrifying, horrifying screech suddenly pierces the air. I don't know why the that, door opens. I don't know why the door opens. <laughs> <laughs> it just played it sequentially, so I'm sorry. I was. <laughs> I'm like, oh, we woke up the. Oh man. That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't even like that. Wasn't even the sound I was looking for. There it is. There we go. All right. So it's, uh, yeah, as this horrible screech you hear through the fog, we're gonna go ahead and get into uh, actually act on that initiative order. So as the combat begins. Uh, remember, Tenzveta is still, uh, you are still roughly 100 feet. For the rest of you, you have yet to see this. You just see, if you can, you see Ash, and he is trained on something. But you can't see what it is. Alright, so. Oh. Uh, so we can see the scarecrow. Can, can Cole see the scarecrow? Uh, make a perception check. Oh, that's not the best. That's an eight. No, you don't see. You don't see anything at the moment. All you can see is you can see Ash. Just suddenly, you hear the crack as well. You hear the sound. Not that you're much quieter. But you hear this snap, and you all turn to him, and as he, as he pulls, he draws the bow and pulls it up, and he's looking through the fog. You can kind of see where he's aiming, but you can't see anything else. Okay. Um... <sighs> oh, I think the jig's up then, huh? All right. Um, so Cole is just going to stand straight up. And go, hello, hello, hello. Looking for me. And uh, is going to pull the shield off his back, pull the spear out, bang it a couple times, and cast um, uh, Shield of Faith. Hopefully, this will distract it enough so my other hidden friends can do something about it. 
and I'll just start generally walking into the direction that uh, Ash is pointed into. Okay, why don't we make this a little bit easier on everyone? And I'm going to go ahead and bring us in to here. Uh, tch, tch, tch. All right. There we go. I have no tokens. You'll have a token no tokens. momentarily. Fantastic. Oh, fuck me and no goddamn blind sight. <laughs> Dark vision. That's yeah. what I'm thinking of. Oh, hey, Durango. <laughs> Save me. We got this. So you guys are over here. Pinzet is up there. Uh, we'll say, Ash, you were trying to move around to the south. So you were, we'll say, we'll put you, put everybody like right here. My friend, they can only be one. Durango Fortress you clearly. Uh, are there two? I do, I do believe. Do you guys see two as well? Is that just oh, me? I only see two Durangos or two Scarecrows? I see two Durangos. <laughs> I only see one Durango. Yep. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Hold on. All right. Uh, so that Scarecrow takes off running. At Ash. Uh, I don't know if it's on it or not, but I wasn't waiting till it got 15 minutes in front of me before I... Blue stop that arrow. Feet from you, okay? Oh, I think I, I might know what it is, uh, Ben. I see, I see uh, tens as like another coal. Okay. Oh, I see it. Oh, there's a pile. Gotcha. Yeah, there's, there's a pile. There's a whole pile right there. We're in a pile right now too. I also uh, appear to have lost everybody's initiative rolls, which is great. Uh, we've I got... I was 16. Yeah. I was 17 yeah. point we something. We have a... Well, if you quit rolling, I can tell you. Alright. Quit rolling so many initiatives. Can't help myself. Well, you rolled for us anyway. Uh, mine was, uh, 15. 15. Cole, what was yours? Uh, 17. Ash was a 16 and I was a 13. You're I mean, experiencing lots of... You're a 13, right? Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. So as that scarecrow rushes towards you, Ash, you can see suddenly you know, through just moving much faster through the muck it just it just lurches forward those those two claws just come scraping up out of the out of those tall reeves and slash at you bring it on <laughs> Ooh. all right well yep that is a 23 that's a natural 20. that'll that'll hit Right. Uh, it's nine points of slashing damage. Rolled very okay. poorly there. And I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Natural 20 for a 22. Yes. 22, right. So as this, this terrifying visage just comes lurching at you, you feel that first claw scrape. And as it does, this this immediate terror begins to fill you. You fight through it and try to position yourself to defend yourself to in defense as the second attack comes through. Jesus. Having all kinds of difficulties. You'd think I haven't done this in three weeks. <laughs> oh, it's an 18. That'll hit as well. All right, you take another three points of slashing damage. And... 
you have to make another. Yeah, I'm gonna say no because usually when you, usually when you succeed on those, you're good for a minute, right? So I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna do it every time. But go ahead and make a, uh, a perception check for me. A perception check. Interesting. Twelve. Uh, yep, so that's all you see. You don't see the, the rest of your vision is pretty much blinded now as you are focused on this enemy. The fog thick all around you. You can barely see your friends. You see a slight glow coming from Cole's direction. You don't see tens at all as this scarecrow is now on top of you. Ash. Oh, oh gosh. Um, I wasn't ready. We, all right, we're going to go ahead and move back by 10 feet. I'm guessing take that attack of opportunity. There we go. Yeah, that'll hit. I love it. Love to you love to see it. I mean, that's that four four it. slashing damage. And then as he gets clawed in the side as he's trying to duck away, he kind of stumbles and rolls and comes back up and uh, looses off the two arrows, one of which is got still got the. Uh, cloth wrapped around it for a 23 yeah 23 hits go ahead and roll that'll be nine points of damage holy crap he hit something <laughs> um that wasn't his buddies i know i'm so happy for all of us uh, hang on, I'm trying to find the other thing. And then I'm going to go ahead and you see the magic kind of start swirling into it. A kind of purplish energy as I shoot the second arrow. For a 15. 15 hits. So that is going to be 10 points of piercing damage as well as 2d6 psychic damage if it can take it. So that's 10 psychic damage and that's going to make a wisdom saving throw or be unable to see anything farther than 5 feet away until the start of my next turn. Total, total damage was a 10, you said, right? Uh, so total damage from the second arrow is 20, 10 piercing, 10 psychic. Okay, 20 total. Good. Okay. And I need a wisdom saving throw. That is correct. Yeah, that'll, that'll save. 17 makes it, right? So as you you dart backwards, another, another claw rips and tears at you. You can feel it just shred across whatever... Whatever armor you have on the front there, that leather getting scraped and pushed in, you <clears throat> cough as you dart backwards and unleash just a barrage of arrows, just one after another, firing that second one, grabbing that purple energy that slams into the bag. You can see the darkness just begin to pull over it, but as it, as, as it starts to permeate through, the thing shakes and stumbles a bit through the muck and just continues to look up with you, that, that now holes gaping in that crooked sewn on smile in this face is like insects and in, in mixed in with raven feathers just kind of pour out of these these gaping wounds if you will as it just kneels down in like an animalistic form on the ground and just begins to claw its way at you on all fours ew <laughs> i don't like it i don't like it uh that'll end my turn Beautiful. And with that, Durango. 
Uh, so Durango levels his mandolin towards the uh, scarecrow, and launches into a couple of tasty licks, gathers up that uh, that goldenrod yellow energy in the neck, and yeah, fires off a couple of blasts. It's uh, fifteen to hit. Fifteen hits. Uh, 13 fours. It's 18 to hit. 18 hits. Or another, or another 13 damage. So essentially, it, it, this creature just begins to launch itself at you again, Ash, just kind of tearing, almost like pulling itself with those those metal claws that aren't even aren't even real, right? They're like rusted. Um, uh, farm instruments as they just claws its way towards you. As it lurches up again, you can see from behind you two blasts of energy slam into it. The first one barreling a hole in. Puffs of raven feathers and dust just go flying. As it screeches again at you, the the head just gets taken off by an, another eldritch blast. It just explodes it and then the, the clothing just kind of falls and crumples to the ground. Thanks. I need everybody to make perception checks for me. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, Seven. that 20, baby. Two, two natural ones there. Yeah, look at that shit. Dirty, ah. dirty 20 for me. God damn, guys. All ends of the spectrum, boys. Yep. Well, you know, the thing is, is the fog is obviously, in, it, depending on the angle and the way the light hits, sometimes at some points it's more difficult to see through than others, right? So Ash and Cole, you guys get a, a good look at two of those other stakes in the distance, which are also now emptied. You hear a bit of a rustling as everything quiets down for a moment through the grass, but you can't see anything. But you can hear movement. Still no sign of Tensveta. More incoming. Tens. Um, I mean, Tens is going to maintain his stealth. He's just going to sit here for a second, you know, listening. Um, technically still invisible. Um. I think what he's going to do is is use his once a day for detect thoughts to kind of see where everybody else is around him um in a 30 foot What's radius 30 foot radius yeah and it's not like digging it's not getting surface th it's literally just who all is around like, me. like echo locating through detect thoughts yeah mm -hmm. uh you actually the only person you don't pick up is ash but the only thoughts you get are suddenly cole who is in a very defensive mindset uh, and Durango, who is just smug. Typical. Um, Thinking about his grooming. Yeah. On both <laughs> ends, really. Defensive and smug. Um, then I th then I guess as a bonus action, do I do you want me to reroll stealth, or can I maintain it without moving? Uh, I would say you can maintain it, yeah. Okay. Um, then if that's the case, I'm going to go ahead and up Blade Song. Since it doesn't say it does anything, and I'm just going to sit here. That's my turn. Okay. So just hunkering down and waiting. Your eyes are just peeled on the, um, your surroundings, trying to see everywhere, trying to find where these, where these other scarecrows might be coming from, or, or if another assailant is even coming. Not That's, certain. You're not certain. Cole yeah. is Cole is yeah, very defensive. Like like he's expecting more, but that's kind of always Cole. So, right, right. Okay, uh, 
we're gonna go to we're gonna go to Cole. All right, uh, Cole. Um, he's already up and standing. He knows these things are out there, so he's not gonna try to pretend that they're not. And uh, I'm just gonna move slowly, uh, thirty feet forward. Uh, again, my typical sort of spot on esque uh, arrangement. Um, and uh, let's see, how long does that? Um, okay, it's only one round. Uh, I'm gonna hold my action. If one of these things uh, pop up, um, I'm just I'm just waiting for them. Okay. So you're just looking for the first scarecrow you can see. Kind of posturing your, yourself defensively. Yeah, that's, that's, it. that's it. I'm trying to take point okay. position and just sort of scan in the horizon. All right. For sake of brevity in this round, why don't we go Ash, Durango, and then tens again, and we'll start at ten. So, Ash, what are you what are you doing in this moment? I still can't see any of the things. You don't see anything yet, no. I am gonna press digitate the is the cor the corpse of the scarecrow thing still sitting over there? Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm gonna press digitate the uh, arrow on fire uh, with that cloth, and hope that the rest of it takes. Uh, and I'm going to move an additional, maybe I'm going to move an additional, um, I'm going to try to move. You can't move unless it's your oh. turn whenever I'm in shift order. Got it. Um, I'm going to try to move right behind Ryan, uh, Cole by about five, ten feet. I'd recommend five. I can do something about it. If, uh, right you hit. That is correct. And I'm hoping that the Scarecrow catches on fire and gives us a nice, you know, so I can see in the dark. Yeah, it's it's difficult. It really doesn't burn that well, right? Because it's it's in the muck and the water. That yeah. magical flame burns bright for a second, and as it does, it turns this almost sickly greenish gray color. As it burns bright, but it's just a flash before it just tapers out and just becomes this thick black smoke, which has the opposite effect. Durango, what are you doing? Uh, Durango's gonna keep pace with, uh, with Cole as he disappears. Okay. And as they come to a stop, he is going to disappear himself. Okay. All right, so Durango just puts a hand on your shoulder, Cole, right behind you. You're still, still waiting, scanning, familiar with the touch. You can feel the six fingers as he, uh, uh, and then he suddenly vanishes. All right, Tens, we're gonna go to you one more time. Do I get anything new on the detect thoughts? Just Ash. Frustrated. <laughs> Frustrated, but also kind of relieved that there's not fire. Okay. Um, I am going to whisper out to... Let's see. It doesn't say it takes any action or bonus action to do this with the telepathic feet so i'm going to telepathically uh like just say to cole don't say it out loud or they're more on their way i think so uh they vacated their stands all right um then i'm gonna stay low as low as i can uh doing my best to maintain stealth so i'll take half movement if you'll let me to maintain that stealth. Uh, yeah, but uh, well, you're, I'm gonna, you'll make another stealth with advantage. You're still okay. invisible. I would have broken invisibility with the tech thoughts. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh. Oh, good. Uh, but he's going to stay low, moving, you know, slower than the others and kind of like, um, pulling the hilt of 
our friend Sun Sword out, not lighting it yet. Um, and a hand of handful of marbles in the others. He's just gonna take the double move. What was your stealth roll? Twenty feet. Oh, I haven't rolled it again. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Sorry. You said still at advantage or no? Uh, not without the invisibility. 22. Okay. Uh, and we will move... Since we're going at half speed, we'll only go 20 feet. Yeah. 20 feet, so we'll go to here, staying low to the ground, waiting. Um... And then double move again to just move out a little bit further, get past the log as a bonus action, holding the action until okay. I catch something. Make another perception check at disadvantage for me. Do I get anything off the mental thing? No. Okay. 11. And then I will hold my action to booming blade someone if they get close enough. Okay. Uh, Tenzveta, through the reeds, you see one of them running. Uh, they are about 15 feet away from you. Okay. But rushing through that grass, low, low, low to the ground, like all fours, almost like a a, a, a spider-like or some sort of insect on the ground. It's just like clawing its way through the muck. Uh, I am close enough. I will keep that telepathic link up to Cole, and I'll just say, it's on the way to your north. Right. That's my turn. Cole, as you hear that, as you hear those those words, it's on the on your way to the north. From behind you, you hear another piercing scream from almost impossible because it's not it's, it it doesn't seem like it's coming from anywhere. As it darts out of the reeds and lurches, lunges itself at Ash. Yeah. Yep. Uh, hold on. I, keeps doing, I don't know why it keeps doing that, but it's an 18 hit. Most definitely. Uh, well, one, one moment, one moment. Uh, I am going to use my reaction. Uh, where is it? Right here. Um, to impose disadvantage with my fighting style protection on that attack. To win okay. paladin shit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Roll another one then. I just, as I'll hear it scattering, I'm just going to yell, Ash, look out! Uh, that is a six. That misses. Yeah, so as this, in this moment, is suddenly, of the, as the, this flash of the creature, Cole sees it coming, shouts, and, and almost shoves you down as you duck down into the muck. It's just this claw swiping just over you. Reaching, you, could, you see this, again, almost a crooked face on this one. It's not quite the same as the other one, just sewn on. Oddly, with these with the weird brass buttons for eyes, as it reaches out with a second claw. That is a natural one. So, no. Yeah, as the yeah as the again that that warning from Cole gave you just enough time to duck away. Both claws just like you could see them cut down some of that grass around you, just in quick movements as it all just begins to fall and tumble into the muck. Ash, you are up. Uh, Why? Um. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to try it. Um, as it, you know, Ash is doing the, the limbo with dodging claws, you just kind of see some of the fog kind of coalesce on his hand and turn into ice and he throws it off at um the scarecrow as i cast frostbite i uh, gotta make a 
DC 15 con save. It's a nine, I fail. So that is going to be uh, nine, or yeah, nine points of cold damage, and it has disadvantage on the next weapon attack roll it makes before the end of my next turn. I don't know if Claw stops. Yeah, you reach that weapon. hand out, that icy energy just coalesces, and you can watch the, the water from where it is just begin to solidify like ice from the ground frost is, is, is bits of that cloth like creak and break as it's trying to move itself but it's stuck in place um what can i even do for my bonus action i don't remember uh that'll that'll be it Shall end me turn. All right. Actually, so uh, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Actually. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> you did. Um, Cole, it's actually Cole. I'm sorry, Cole. Um, I'm gonna sweep around, uh, sort of um, uh, rotating, rotating around shields. Uh, stands out where my back never uh, leaving ashes. Uh, I cannot move my token for some reason. There we go. There you go. And uh, come up to the scarecrow, and like you might want to knock that off, and come out with him uh, at him with the with the spear, kind of looking to like pierce it through, and then like let's fling it back off. Ah. Uh... Oh, geez, that's an 11 to hit. 11 just hits. Oh, wow, okay. Mm -hmm. So you have to roll a natural one to miss. They are sacks of feather stuffed cloth. I mean, yep. come on, guys. Pass yeah, 12 yeah, points of damage on that one. Yeah, I didn't think it would be too bad. And I'm going to use my new fancy ability. Uh, pull on master. My new feet. Oh. And um, I'm gonna use my bonus attack. Oh, I know. I'm gonna use my my bonus action right now, and then do my other my other attack. It's fine. Um, so I I stab it, then I try I try to rotate it around, pull out, and hit it with the reverse end of the spear. Um, the attacks uh, it's a D4 on that, and that's an extra four points of damage to the back end of the spear. Okay. Uh, and then I pull back, and you, this time, uh, kicking off with a bit of momentum, I charge myself with the shield and the spear into uh, the, the sack of feathers. <laughs> I rolled a natural one. <laughs> the only way that I could have not hit him. I blame yeah, so, uh, yeah, Me too. What? <laughs> Technically, you were supposed to roll for the attack on that. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, I, again, rule, rule of cool here. I was just going to let you do it. <laughs> just going forward. So it had <laughs> you know, to be... Because yeah, I didn't think okay. it matters. But yes, going oh, okay. forward, yeah, your, okay, your, your extra attack is a part of your attack action. No, it says right? it's so, a bonus action. No, no, but, but you're... Yeah, right. To use that the blunt end of the spear. I'm saying your extra attack for multi-attack. Oh, it's is part, a part of the of same of the attack. Okay. Yes, yes. Gotcha, gotcha. But gotcha. Okay. I let you play it out and it didn't work out for you this time. So yep. remember next time. Okay. Anyways, that second that second strike. Or the third strike, I should say. As you, you go to reel back, the blunt end catching the scarecrow, you can see it bends backwards and as it does the ice that is formed on its legs just like snaps off and breaks and feathers just begin to fly out as it, as it positions itself almost upside down like an earwig <laughs> you know like uh, yeah oh. uh, again the, the head just on the bottom just completely rotating and staring up at you as it's now just kind of crawling its way around and from the uh, reversed itself durango So, Durango is going to 
Ash's turn? He, he did no, Ash, Ash went. Him. I did Ash yeah. before him. Ash was supposed uh, to go okay. after him. Yeah. I misunderstood. Sorry. Ash Brand got excited because he got attacked, so, yeah. <laughs> Um, being oh, invisible, you're... I would have advantage on the first one, right? Is that how it works? Unseen attacker? Yeah. Cool. You're, you're casting Elder's Blast? Really? <laughs> it was that or my greatsword, right? And I'm just, I'm feeling lazy. Feeling lazy. It's uh, 12 to hit. 12 hits. Uh, seven damage for the first one. Okay. Second attack is a. It's a nine. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Wow. Um, I also ooh. appear to have lost sight of my token somehow. I'm, I'm not sure how this happened. You're invisible. Very invisible. <laughs> so invisible, I can't see myself. Could Durango make himself so invisible that he himself <laughs> could not see himself? I don't think anybody could see themselves if they were invisible. Well, well the Durango has very discerning eyes, you know. <laughs> Anyways, that first that first Eldritch Blast slams into the creature. He's still he's still still standing as, as bits of the more of the top chunks of it just go flying off into the fog. Still just barely just kind of like pulling itself up over its own like frozen legs to get at you, um, Cole. Just then, another blur and another shape in the darkness comes oh, rushing Jesus. out. Uh, we'll do uh, Cole. Yeah, Cole hasn't tried to be an attack yet. Yeah, right. It's an eight. Mm -hmm. Nice. No, sir. Second one's a 20. Oh, that just hits. All right, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, not oh. Oh, that's a nine. Hey, as this, as this shape just comes barreling out from behind you, between seeing the first one in front of you and the second one now, those claws just bite into you. You can feel them dig in and almost just crunch against that that chainmail armor as they as they, they they try to pull into you this sudden fear grips you as you are now frightened you uh don't you get buffed of... sorry to interrupt don't you get buffed by your own aura for saving throws uh oh yes i do i forget about that so i get a uh, shit baby yeah i think that's a 12 instead now with plus three to charisma does that help a 12 helps yeah. Ooh! <laughs> Ooh! I was gonna say he's not immune to fear until level ten, so. Uh, but you just still you do still take five points of damage. Okay? I take uh, <laughs> take two damage. points. Of, I take two points of damage because I have heavy armor master. As long as you remember. <laughs> take take your damage. Ten Zveta. So, would you say that I keep stealth until I take my action? Can I move and keep my stealth of twenty two? Can I have the advantage whenever I bum rush this guy up north? With my with my radiant sword. I would, like, I would say if you want to roll for it, we can roll for it. Okay. Because if you are, yeah, if you're going to draw the sword and the light's going to come out of the sword, this thing is moving very fast. It's in a full sprint. Well, theoretically, I could just meet it and then light it as I go into step. Sure, but he, again, if any any point in time you're trying to intercept it, it doesn't see you. So, go for it. Do you want me to roll another stealth check? Should I yes. use my bonus action? Oh, Jesus. Good luck. Oh, fucking course. Okay. Well, I'm already doing oh, no. it. So, yep. here we go. Sunswad. 15 booming blades, so we get the damage here, which is 9, plus another d8 of thunder now. So 10 points of damage, 9 radiant, 1 thunder, and then, you know, 
That's his turn. At a boy, champ. Okay, yeah. So as he, uh, you, uh, you see this, you see one of these scarecrows tearing through the reeds. You dart out to intercept it. The two of you spin around each other. You whip around with that sun sword as it ignites in your hand as you uh, it cuts deep into it, and you can see bits of that uh, the the cloth just it just sort of evaporate away under the heat of it. That black smoke almost choking you as it's this disgustingly green smoke just kind of starts to peel off of the the rotten linen underneath the creature still lurching all of a sudden towards you and with that it's its turn so it is going to make its first attack which it does with a 20 yep just barely over go ahead and make a wisdom saving throw for me Damage. Let me check something real quick. I can't remember if the new lineage of Aladrin gets. It's just I'm trying to okay. All right. Wisdom save. Eleven. Eleven just makes it. Jeez. The second strike is a seven. Miss. All right, so you took five points of damage from the first claw attack, fighting through the, the fear of the situation being isolated from your friends. You push through and you continue to engage with the creature, although it is menacing and evil looking as it writhes around in the, uh, in the muck and the, the reeds. This last one is going to dart out at Cole again. Keep him coming. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna. It's a natural 20. I shouldn't have said anything. Yeah, you <laughs> should not have. No. I appreciate the enthusiasm, though. It's 10 points of slashing damage. That is 7 points oh. of slashing damage. All right, make a wisdom saving throw again for me. Oh, yeah. Rub it in, rub it in. It like that. Uh, well, uh, wait, uh, that's 12. Oh, well, yeah. succeeds. Yeah. Wait, so you're still good. Is plus it... three, right? I think last time I rolled, um, I rolled a, uh, an ability check on a saving throw. Uh, that was a saving throw, which is yeah. fine. It doesn't Eight, matter. But nine, yeah. 10, 11. Yeah. 11 still passes. Oh, sorry. 11. So, yeah, my bad. Yeah. I thought four. Okay. Never mind. Yep. 11 is still good. Just passes. So you're not frightened yet. Of course I'm not. I'm Cole Maven. Who frightens me? As all <laughs> of you, suddenly now in the mist and the fog, this shape looming up in the air above, you can see a little clearer there. And your eyes, despite the combat and everything else, start to try to understand exactly what it is that they're seeing. At first, this inverted skull floating above the fog. From behind it, this gnarled creature, just barely visible above the inverted jawbone of this gigantic skull floating in the air as it just sort of leans over with a crooked hand. <laughs> oh, early breakfast this morning. How delightful. And that's where we're going to take our break. Uh, 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 lasagna. Baba lasagna, here we go. Baba lasagna. Baba lasagna. <laughs> All right, everybody, give us uh, thank you for joining the stream. Make sure you get your elf eggs in, spend them. Those are beautiful dice this month. Only real elf eggs. All right. Yeah, otherwise, I'm going ones. to be. If I find otherwise... any more of these, we're gonna have a talk. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> still sitting there. I'm just gonna start mailing people now. eggs, and eventually, I'll get to you. He said it's so. warm now. <laughs> 
Oh, are we setting. gonna mail this so out with disturbing. the next prize set? Is this gonna be like oh, the yeah. next like neg two token? <laughs> the neg egg, yeah. man. Come on. Yeah, fuck, fuck stickers and patches and all that shit, man. Neg eggs. That's what's up. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> all right, give us, uh, give us ten minutes just to take, take a quick bio, refresh our, our our beverages. We'll get right back into this uh, this combat. Maybe here's maybe this is the one. Maybe this is where we end Strahd. So we'll find out. He's trying. In ten minutes. We all know. All right. <laughs> Welcome back. No more. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, Chuck, Charles. No waifu. <laughs> no waifu talk on stream. <laughs> The only waifu you get is Baba Lasaga. Mm, gross. And Cole, you get the scarecrow. <laughs> <laughs> Guess it's just me and you, Durango. <laughs> uh, Cole, does a 16 hit? Uh, that does not. How about a 21? Oh, yeah, it's... All right, that is another uh, three points of slashing damage. I think reduced to uh, nothing. Right. <laughs> Make a wisdom saving throw for me. Uh, twenty-one plus three, so twenty-four. Twenty-four. So you were good. As this uh, crumbling bit of a scarecrow just kind of lurches out, it's trying to claw almost at your feet now as you're. Uh, as it's pulling its way to the mud with these the farm farm tool like fingers, and it is your turn, Cole. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Babala Saga, how far? How far, like up? What I say she is. <sighs> um. If you want to get an exact, well, do me a favor. What's your passive perception? Uh, my passive. It's Eleven, right? Yeah. Hard to tell. I mean, she's way above the way above the uh, the mist, but you're surrounded by scarecrows at the moment, so really, really tough to get a good good ranging on it. Unless you want to take your turn and really get a good look. No, burn we're not going to do a that. Bonus, burn a bonus action. Burn I'll a go. bonus action. I got three of them around me, so, um... Uh, there are three scarecrows around me. I'm just gonna sort of look at them and their, their cold, dead eyes. Uh, or holes for where their eyes should be. Just go, uh, now you're gonna learn why they've heard of me. And I cast Bane. Ooh. On... Nice. On the three scarecrows around me. Okay. That does touch that does drop the concentration on shield of faith though. So they might Love touch it. you. Nice. Oof! All three fail. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then. Yeah, no, that's it. Uh, uh, just making sure I'm sticking this defensive position. I'm back to back with Ash right now, and uh, just making sure everything's on a swivel and trying to keep an eye on uh, Baba La Saga. All right. That will bring us to uh, that scarecrow, which is deceased. Ash. Ash, back to back with Cole, sees these and sees Durango on him, is going to roll out to his right quick and reach out. And it's going to be that same thing. He's got his bow on one hand, but everybody's too close. So he's going to reach out and kind of throw. And you'll see the, the fog coalesce again as I do uh, not click on that. I want the Berez battle. Uh, Frostbite again. DC 15 con save for. This, this guy right here. All right, 
that is a failure. Um, so six point of cold damage, and they have disadvantage on weapon attacks until the end of my next turn. All right, the six points is all you needed. You see the one crawling on the ground just suddenly freeze in place, and it, its arms begin to rip and tear as the, the metal from the uh, the claws just, like, sticks to the frozen ground and just rips itself apart as it just continues to try to lurch forward. And... Yeah. Yep, that'll be my turn. Okay. All right, that'll bring us to uh, Durango. So ducking and weaving and kind of popping out between Ash and Cole where where he can. Durango fires off a couple of Eldritch blasts. I, I know everyone's shocked. <laughs> Should get advantage for how surprised everyone is. <laughs> hey! Uh, 25 hits. Who are you firing oh. these at? That's uh, the one to Cole's left there. That was a 25 okay. and a 10 to hit. Uh, the first one hits, right? Yep. For 12 damage. Oh, those points. damage rolls on those, man. Yeah, getting good rolls on the damage for the blast tonight. And besides that, uh, Drango is just going to move over. If I have the right cursor selected, there we go. Just kind of keep everybody between him and the danger as per usual, and that's my turn. All right, excellent. Uh, this Scarecrow is going to move up a little bit and um, try to slice through Ash. Oh, no, please don't. That uh, 15. All right, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, that hit? Yeah, 15 just barely hits. I'll use my reaction to impose disadvantage on that hit. That's a natural one. Misses. Second Whew. attack is a two. <laughs> Banging and putting in work. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's cool that you can tonight. see it just working automatically, right? Like, I love that. Yeah. Active effects. Boundary, folks. Uh, anyway, so as the uh, that scarecrow goes to attack you again, Cole quickly imposes himself in. You can see that the shield just comes up, the claws scraping across instead of instead of you know newer nearly nearly hit your face. And that that little bit of time, just enough to uh, for you to avoid that second that second claw that just comes splashing up out of the muck. Ah, God, you're everywhere tonight. Tens Veta. <laughs> Tins is going to scoop some of those marbles out of his uh, out of his pouch. Actually, no, he's not. He's going to pull out another large shooter. He's going to use his bonus action to disengage from this guy. Uh, and he's going to move his full movement speed of 40 feet because he's blade singing to be as far away from him as possible. Then he's going to crush that shooter and throw it towards uh, Cole. As he just says... Make sure you can reach it, and whoosh, blows the dust in his direction as I cast in large. Oh. Oh. Now, my question, JD, is because the weapons are enlarged as well, would that give him a 15-foot reach instead of just a 10? That's an interesting concept could use a little fuel myself <laughs> we could all use no i won't do it i won't do it small rant Actually. while jd's figuring this out i have fueled up my vehicle this week and i looked at the gas prices and i was like God, that seems really high even though i know gas prices have been high i looked i had already started filling up it was four dollars and 70 some cents to fill up across the road it was like three dollars and forty some cents yeah, so, yeah. Awesome. so here here's how i'm gonna rule this um uh under normal circumstances i would tell you yes um in this moment uh this the blood spear doesn't have a physical like range of 10 feet it's a spear uh, it spears, does. Pull arms are the ones that have reach. I don't have reach on. Blood he doesn't spear. have reach, but he's got. I range, got versatile. So you could throw it. Yeah. 
That doesn't make any sense. It's a spear. That's a short spear. That doesn't what make do any want? sense. It's not a spear at that point. It's like a. It's like a. Listen, like if a, you, you you take, you take a sword six at that foot hole and put a spear tip on it, it's a spear. Or it doesn't have to be ten feet. That pole arms have reach <laughs> technically. Jesus. Send it to email I, I was, to lo Gary I was looking. I was looking it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whatever. Anyway. Okay. Well, his. Yeah. Enlarge. Take it. Size Love doubles. It. Be it. So you're now ten feet tall, twelve feet tall, right? How how tall is Cole? Uh, I'll, I'll think. Yeah, he's like five eleven or something like that. So you see, it's ten, yeah, eleven We're feet. Give you a... While this weapon, uh, while these weapons are enlarged, they deal an extra D four in damage. All Take right. That. Doesn't say anything about the range, though, does it? No, it doesn't, JD. That's right. Oh wow, this one's in here too. Wow, yeah, that's great stuff. Didn't Beautiful. Do is, didn't do anything to his token though. He should be. No, you can just you can just imagine. He should. Just your, you can just, you can just use your you can use your imagination. You can just right click on the token, man. And do the t -t 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 and it does it. All right, there you go. Fine. Yeah, you got a giant coal. That does feel right. that does feel better. That does that, that feels <laughs> nice. <laughs> um. Good. Anyway, that's his turn. <laughs> As he flips off the other one. <clears throat> Quit adding scarecrows. <laughs> I'm never gonna Quit stop. It. Stop. All no, right, so the like and, yeah, out of the reeds, you see the one come come barreling through. How many have you killed? I don't know. Two. Two. Right. So out of the reeds, you see the one that yeah, just following you, barreling after through. As you, you you hit a bit of a clearing, you see a second one come tearing out of that same that same heavy grass towards you. Um. All right, Cole. This one is going to claw at you. <laughs> Say, uh, one. Natural one. Yes, uh... Feels like I'm playing on Monday. <laughs> and a five. <laughs> right, yeah, the enlarged form, your shield in hand, just, it, it, it cannot seem to penetrate this, this massive bulwark in your hands now. Um, and DM, I'm not trying to take it off, but it looks like I still have the, uh, divine, um, I mean, uh, shield of faith on. Okay, gotcha. All right. And you see that that skull just floating up overhead. It comes drops down a little bit in the sky, but it's still maybe fifteen feet above you, Cole. As that gnarled hand reaches up over the side, you can barely see what's on the other end of it. You can just see the hand just begin to coalesce this black greenish energy. I don't like it. I'm in danger. Hmm. She casts a uh, blight on you. I need a uh, constitution saving throw. Cold. Um. Uh, that's a nine. Oof. Come on, man. Mm. Come on, man. You take 32 days. points of necrotic damage. Um, 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 um. Can I, can I do any? I can't do anything about it. Yeah, I guess I take it. Yeah, as the, as all around you, these, like, large stalks of of weird flowers begin to bloom in the swamp and as they do they grow up to almost your full height and just spew out these spores into your mouth and as these these they get all over your skin and into your throat they, you feel them begin to make they, necrotic just kind of eat away your flesh like uh some sort of uh, bacteria as the plants just disintegrate into the ground 
turn. Uh, and with that, we will go to your turn, Cole. But you're looking so big. Um, Concentration check on on Bane. Oh yeah, let me do mm. that. Yeah, yeah. You gotta beat a sixteen. Wait, how do you count? Uh, it's half. It's half the damage you take, or ten, whichever one is higher. Okay. Right. Um, I I've done this so infrequently. What am I supposed to be rolling? Con save. Uh, con, con save. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Boom! Not 19. Still up. Um. So. Okay, Baba Lasaga's still 30 feet up. Uh, okay. Uh. And Tearlaw can get. Okay, yeah, that's not gonna work out. Uh, I'm going to uh, just attack the one that's in front of Ash. I'll keep this simple. And uh, uh, she might want to duck. Uh, uh. Uh, that's a the most cock twenty six I've ever seen on my end, but that's a twenty six to hit. Fuck, dirty. <laughs> twenty six hits. Uh, so nine points of damage there, and then um, awful roll. <laughs> yeah, terrible. Yep. And I'm gonna spin the spear around, so it's stab down from the top of my second hit. Uh, totally free to hit. Twenty three hits. Um. So then I skew it from the top, and then uh, pull out the spear from the ground. This is another nine points of damage on that. And spin the spear around, so it'll do like a quarter staff whack, uh, slam into the the rest of it. Nope. And that's just uh, I have to roll the hit for that, right? Yeah. Okay. Natural twenty. That's forty-four, baby. Very nice. Wow. It's like all ones, wow. bro. What? It's just two twos it's and two ones. Two twos and two ones. But it's exactly the amount you needed. So like Sid from Toy Story, you just you just <laughs> eviscerate this rag doll in front of you. <laughs> I can't think of anything else besides Cole's now Sid from Toy Story. <laughs> he always was. He always was. He always was. Now we all know. <laughs> Ash. Uh, do I see Baba? This, this ragdoll just get eviscerated in front of you? Yes. Baba the Moose? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you don't see her physical form just barely <laughs> peeking over the top of this giant skull floating upside down in the air. So you can you barely see her, but you can see the skull pretty clearly. Hmm. Uh, I wasn't ready. How dare Just you? the worst. Just the worst. I know. I'm sorry. Um. Ah, we got incoming. And I'm going to let off two arrows. Not 17. 17 misses. I figured. Second arrow. <laughs> 10. Also misses. Uh, that bonus action. We're going to go ahead and action yeah. surge. That is not a bonus action. Uh, in my brain, it is. We're going to pound it into your brain. No. Do me a favor, though. So, again, so as you fire these arrows, okay, mm -hmm. the first one, uh, the the first one uh, plinks into the skeleton. Can you roll the damage on it for me? Uh, roll your arrow damage. On the second one or the first yep. one? The first one. It doesn't matter. Yeah, 
It's the same damage, but just for one of the shots. 11 points of damage. 11 points. Okay, great. Oh, no. Yeah, so that first, the first arrow, although it misses her, slams into the skull. You can see it, like, stick in and crack a little bit as it hits that skull. The second one just goes, shoots wide and flicks off of it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to skip the, the action surge. Uh, something went wrong with my character card, so I got to try to figure that out. I Well, that's fine. I'll just roll two more attacks quick. I, I'm just sorry. I got I panicked. Um. Uh. So what did I see? A 16. Is it 25 and a Jesus? I don't know. It would have a 25 and a 24. So both hit. Um. Actually. So go ahead and roll damage. Uh. So nine and eight, nine, ten, eleven points of piercing. <clears throat> okay awesome so the, the zoning back in now you take a deep breath and you fire two more shots quickly uh this time hitting the the creature that is slumped just behind as the the whole skull sort of lurches forward a little bit after that second shot kind of catches it underneath and it gives you a better angle and you fire both both hit and pierce into whatever's behind it uh you then don't see gonna, much though so. i'm gonna break off from the main group to try to not bunch up and that'll end my turn all right durango so seeing uh ash firing off into the distance uh, durango would be able to see this uh, floating skull as well i assume uh yeah yeah uh durango starts like tapping on his fretboard like on the strings, playing percussively for a little bit. Uh, the riff finishes up with a couple of uh, very dramatic open-handed slaps to the soundboard as he casts uh, Shatter on on the skull and whatever's behind it in that area. Sure. It's a DC 15 con save. Break the skull! Hmm. I don't know what the skull's made out of, but if it's inorganic, then it's a disadvantage. Yep. Is bones organic? Yeah. I think that I just recently saw something about this, right? A, a, a corpse in D&D officially becomes an object, right? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then a mimic can become objects. Yep. Uh, yep, so that is a fail. So, yeah, fail on both. Ooh, so, that 25 was a damage. good one. Yeah, 20. Wow, okay. That's pretty solid. <laughs> That's a, it's a good shatter. Yeah, as that sound wave just bursts, you can hear this like s this muffled cry from inside, and then you can see cracks just begin to shake, and, and pieces of bone just fall off of this floating skull as it kind of quivers in the air. Uh, Durango's going to take a step back so he doesn't catch a spear butt in the teeth. <laughs> and that's my turn. All right, and with that, we are at Tensveta. Uh, ooh, excuse me. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna just face step into the skull. Uh, how far? It's a 30 foot teleport, and Pythagorean theorem puts me uh, to where I can get there. So, uh, what are we, 30 by 30? 30 by 20. Do you have to be able to see where you're going? Mm, probably, let me check. Uh, yeah, unoccupied space I can see. So can I just do above it? Um, sure. Sure. Okay. Uh, and I'm not going to try and hit her um, with my action. I'm going to stab the skull with a booming blade. Cool. Uh, However, make, an acro make an acrobatics check for me. I have advantage because of blade song. 11. Okay, go ahead and make your attack roll. Uh, if she is within five feet of me as well, she must make a wisdom saving throw uh, DC 13 or be frightened of me. 
We're good there. Gucci. All right. And we're going to booming blade the skull. Well, you're here. Okay, so you're attacking the skull. Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, as you are falling from the sky, swinging out with an 11, I'm going to say the attack's going to be a disadvantage. Oh, come on. Uh, natural one. Um, cool. So that's that's all I got. I I, I mean I'm. Oh. You know. Oh. Wow. Wow. Okay. So. Popping up above her and, and and trying to get onto the skull. Right. You're trying to swing at the skull as you come down, but she, the 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 skull itself is floating in place, and it, it she moves it pretty freely. So it moves just a little to the left and and lists as you try to rotate yourself in the air to hit it and it just the blade just doesn't catch it and as you try to make that attack you just continue to plummet to the ground you take two points of bludgeoning damage as you slam down back into the the muck underneath okay and then a con save a concentration check on the thing i get a plus Ooh. Bonus equal to. Okay, so I get a plus two, too. I keep it up. Okay, cool. That's my turn. Perfect. Great. And with that, it is the Scarecrow's turn. It is going to rush at you. Tenzveta? Mm -hmm. Am I prone? Uh, I'm going to say you're not prone. Okay. I won't beat you up that much. Just because I rolled so low on the damage. So uh, that is a 19. 19 uh, beats my AC by one. Okay, perfect. Six points of slashing damage. Can you make a wisdom saving throw for me? And then the cons uh, for the in beginning keeps it up. All right, the second one darts out towards you as well. Mm -hmm. Those broken claws tearing at your flimsy elven form. That's an 11. Miss. And a nine. Miss. Yeah, so still in blade song now, just just learning the, that new footwork and, and how to imbue your magic into your into it. You just you begin to just dance around these these monsters as they as they try to gore you to death with their metallic claws. Next up we've got uh this one which is going to attack Cole Maven. The first strike is a Six. What do I look like? <laughs> the next is a five. Please. You see how big I am? <laughs> I do indeed. Uh, well, let's have a bit of fun. And I am going to cast... Um... Actually, why don't we do this? Um, <laughs> I can see you saying that up there in the skull. I'm going to cast. Yes, I'm oh. going to cast. How about oh. Ash? Give me a charisma saving throw. With pleasure. I don't I'm know why. About this. Uh, hang on. I was... I'm sorry. Wisdom, not charisma. That oh, makes it well, even worse. Yeah, don't like that. Wisdom saving throw. Oh, come on. <laughs> <It's> ten. <laughs> Suddenly, Ash, a metallic crown just suddenly begins to form around your head, and as it wraps down onto you, it bites into the flesh around your skull. And your eyes suddenly light up this bright orange... <laughs> As you now, now you're mine. 
Well, hey, he gets uh, dark vision now because his eyes are bright orange. Right, sure. <laughs> uh, uh, it's not really going to help me from where you're at right there, but that's okay. And then I'm going to uh, go up another 10 feet in the air and fly this way. Hmm. Beautiful. All right. Cole. It had to fly higher. All right. Higher than an eagle. <laughs> I don't know why that was the thing that uh, got me. I... No, that was good. Um, I think I'm going to keep playing with my toys over here. Look at these. Uh, stab! You should throw one. Is it 14? 14 hits. That's right, I have to roll on that one. Jesus! That was, all, that was Why quite do a few. I do anything? <laughs> That's wow. 8 points. He's still up. 17. Come on, roll better. Hits, yeah. I mean, the fact that you rolled two ones and still did eight okay. points of damage was pretty impressive. Honestly. Right. 15 on this 15, one. 15, yeah. Okay, okay. And, uh, yeah, again, I'm liking it spinning the, spinning the V end around, so I'll sort of, like, baton twirl it and come down. And it's, I guess it's, like, almost tree branch size at this point. It's a 26 to hit. 26 hits. And then... Uh, and just another one. Of course it's a one. Do you have another D4? Uh, I don't think so. It's on all weapon attacks. from All the weapon attacks from the large. Oh, um, dope. Okay. I don't think so. And it adds your strength modifier, so... All right, so that's uh, where's my strength modifier? That's a plus four, so that's a five and a six. So would, it's also a plus what one or two weapon? Would that count on top of it? Uh, it says the damage from this is just a one d four. Right, on the, but, on the... but this is a JD call, I think, because I don't know if it actually—I don't know if that's actually a rule. Because it's a plus, it's a plus one or a plus two weapon, right? So. <laughs> Would it get the extra damage? You got the you got the bonus on the attack roll. Yeah, I'll give it to you. Okay. It's, it's a magic weapon. It's kind of the point, right? Mm -hmm. So that would be what a six and a seven points of damage. A seven, thirteen points. Thirteen points with a bonus action. Yeah. Oh, it's actually plus two, so that's. 15 points. <laughs> well, it's more than you needed anyways. As you, again, just swipe with the spear and just cut down the scarecrow, cutting it into pieces before smashing it into the muck with the butt end of the spear in your giant form. You still have your movement, if you would like to take it. Um... Yeah, without getting out of range of of this guy here, I will. Uh... Yeah, you know, I'm just staying within range by getting closer towards uh, Baba Lasagna. <laughs> I'm sorry, that one's dead as well. Oh. Oh, that was okay. the first. That was the first one you killed. I'm sorry. I don't know why it's not reflecting. Is dead. Just give me a second. Uh, so I'll, I'll run right up on on this uh, this hack then, and uh, can't quite get her, but I'll put myself in position to do so if she ever comes down. All right, Ash. 
Uh, yes. So you have your movement. Am I moving under normal ash things, or am yeah. I? Yeah, you can move wherever you want to move. Okay, but I'm, is, is it being influenced by my crown, or am I just? Nope, your movement is yours. Okay, well, seeing Big Cole run up, then I would move over there, so try to get a clear shot on Bob O'Reilly. <laughs> um, okay, make a wisdom saving throw for me. Okay. This is for the Bob O'Reilly joke. <laughs> He's going to get a natural 20 on both of them, but... Nope. 10. 10. I really, I should have I should have done this on Cole after I made all those rulings. <laughs> all right. Durango, it's your turn. So does Durango have a direct line of sight on uh, on the Baba here? Uh, not really. We'll say if it were a mechanical component in a game, we'd say she, uh, she has about three quarters cover. That's significant. <laughs> yeah. um, and Durango is going to stay right where he is and uh, let off some blasts at the one, two, um, tens of is south there. That's uh, 13 to hits. Uh, 13 hits. And a ten, so just uh, just a one, right? Yep, just a thirteen. Yep. You just can't get that second blast in there tonight, bud. Not, not even not a good happening. damage roll on that one, yeah. No, that's a eight damage. Yeah, I mean, it's still the 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 force hits it and it just tears a chunk of it out. You can see feathers just poof out the other end, but it just it doesn't seem to be slowing down. It they're still just both trying to trying to claw at Tenzveto, who's kind of dodging in between the two of them. No. Oh might not be the most effective attack, but he looked great doing it. Of course he did. Uh, Tenzveta. Um, let's see. 40 and 20. Where does that put me if I face step again? That puts me at 30 exactly, right? 40 and 20. Uh, yes. Okay. Then we're just going to face step underneath it again. Except we're going underneath this time. No. Let's go for above again. And right. still go for the skull. Okay. Acrobatics. I'm gonna do something eventually. Eventually. 17. 17. Okay, much better. And then stab the skull. Do I have disadvantage? Uh, I will give you no. You have advantage this time, so. I have advantage this time. No, not advantage. I'm saying you're not, not at disadvantage. There you go. Okay. Thank you. So, booming blade. Yeah. Twenty hit. Twenty hits, yeah. Okay. Do I have it's a giant floating skull, man? It's not that hard to hit. Do I? I'm not going to take sneak attack on that. Nine points there, and then Booming Blade puts it to another D8 now. Wow, 16 points of damage to it. Right, and you 16. let me know when that yeah. skull moves. And that's my, that's, that's it. All right, will do. And I am now in this skull. Oh, I should have moved before I ended my <laughs> turn in the combat round, sorry. Uh, so you're not oh. in the skull. She needs, if she saw me, she if I appeared within five feet of her, she needs to make another wisdom saving throw or be afraid of me. DC 13. All right, so here's I'm going to rule it. There's there's no room in the skull for you. Okay. So if you're going to appear above her okay. and attack, mm -hmm. you're going to hit the ground. Cool? Hit me. All right, cool. Wisdom saving throw. Mm -hmm. That's a 19. Okay. 
And uh, concentration check on Crown of Madness, right? Uh, nope, she didn't get hit. The skull did. Oh, the skull did. Yep. I've been trying to break it. He's trying to break it. You got uh, six points of damage from the fall as you slam back down into the muck, right? It's just, it, again, you're not even trying to grab onto the skull. You're literally just trying to break it. So you're just appearing above, slamming down with the sun sword. And you can de- see it's, it is cracking. You can see for see it's taken a significant amount of damage. If the skull moves, it will be taking another four points of thunder damage. Sure. That's my turn. Okay. All right. And with that, the scarecrows will continue to run in. This one is going to attack you again, Tensveta. Sure. That is a 19 to hit. 22 to hit, I'm sorry. Sure. 22 hits. Uh, Make a wisdom saving throw for me. You should take 7 points of slashing damage. Wisdom saving throw. Nineteen. Nineteen, beautiful. Uh, that is uh, fourteen. Fourteen misses, and I'll make fourteen my misses. Yep. Check on that. Barely succeeds. Right. Uh, Durango, the second one comes right that you hit with the eldritch blast comes rushing towards you, just tearing, carving up the ground as it's ripping towards you first strikes a 15 uh what's a burn a luck point on that <laughs> it's got to work one of these times right hey. Hey. that time it's an eight much better second strike is a no better for six nice beautiful and if you could see baba saga's face behind her three quarters cover it would be in a scowl <laughs> oh, you're no fun now, are you? I don't know what you're Fine. talking about. I'm plenty fun. Have it your way. And she is going to cast um Fireball. I knew it. So I need coal. <laughs> um this scarecrow. I actually just all just yeah. I just need all of you. To it's make, literally everybody. All of you to make dexterity saving throws. This one might knock me down. Oh good, my dumb stat. <laughs> I mean, just remember you're enlarged, so. Guys, don't worry. The scarecrow failed too. Wait, hold on. Uh, nope. Okay. Shit, yeah, we're gonna burn another luck point. I don't want to get fireballed. Uh, (laughs) Tens, you can add three to your roll. Great, 18. I succeed. Yep. So I'm only taking half. Uh, enlarge works on saving throws as well? No, I was kidding. Okay. I was going to say, all right. You would, you would think it would it negatively impact it, right? You know, he's right. just doing this because he hasn't had a good chance to do a proper fireball on Mondays. It's, you know, I still haven't. Because look, look at those three ones. But that's 19. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. It's not 19. 20, 20. points of fire damage. Ugh. I'm only taking 10. Take it. Half on save, yeah? Yep. yep. And half of that for being a tiefling. You're still big. All right, still big, but not looking so good. And hold on one second for me. Uh, beautiful. Yeah, so this uh, suddenly this this explosion just rocks the swamp floor. You can see just as, as this ball just illuminates suddenly and flashes, this fire just sends to, so just creates even more steam and black smoke as is, is, uh, bits of uh, bits of ash kind of permeate with it through. You can see insects floating around on fire. 
uh, those reeds catching fire suddenly all over the ground as this uh, this explosion goes off. Um, and I need coal. You're up. Ah. About really it. And you see his hands start to glow as he. <laughs> It kind of slaps his chest a couple of times every time he does like a uh, like a radiation of like like light comes from his palm, and I'm dumping forty points of lay on hands on myself. I need some. I need some help. Okay. That brings me up to fifty six. Um. Ah, damn. Um, the range on this. Yeah, I guess uh, I'm going to. She's still forty, like forty feet up, right? Correct. Okay. And Cole's ten feet. If I, <laughs> um, if I jumped. Actually, no. I, I, I that was an action. No, never mind. That's it. That's my turn. I'm gonna get right below, right below her though, and uh, right below the skull. So I'm kind of out of uh, out of view, but yep. I'm kind of you know. Sure. Uh, uh, Ash, you. that crown yeah. just vanishes from your head. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, gonna look around, see Cole standing up in front of him. He's starting to wade into swamp water over here, so he's gonna get out of that a little bit. See Durango, and I'm gonna see Ash draw his bow, but there's like no arrow. And then just all of a sudden, you see dark, swirly, smoky energy form where an arrow would be, and he lets go as I did cast my Eldritch Blast. My Eldritch Blast! At the one that's attacking Durango. Alright. Who attacks? What up? He's a Quincy. Uh, for a 20. <laughs> I only get one Eldritch Blast. I don't have no. enough Warlock. Nope. Cantrips go off of total level, not class. Oh, okay. 20 hits. So that'll be. 10 he should have been a Warlock the, the whole one. time. And then second attack is gonna be a 22. I take it back. <laughs> for, for, for one damage on the second one. I was wrong. <laughs> All right, as you fire that off these two, blue, like, you know? blackish blue bolts of, of, like, icy force energy, it just, it, you can see it just kind of steams through the air. The first one slamming into her over the, uh, over the, the top of the, uh, both of them, just, they, they slam into her over the top of the skull. You can hear it's like, ah! Yeah, as they as they hit. Um, and then you see Ash take a nice deep exhale. A little bit of frost kind of poofs out his nose as I bonus action second wind. First, 17 points of healing. Beautiful. That's real good. Durango. So Eldritch Blast, melee spell at close range, disadvantage, right? Mm-hmm. Correct. Hmm. So anyways, I started blasting. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, I rolled a 20 on the disadvantage. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's a 24 to hit for the first one. And high enough for the second. So first attack is 13 force. Second one is... That's five. All right. Five is enough, though. So the... 
uh, those two shots, even though at close range, right, you, you take that the headstock and press it right up against the um, uh, the creatures. They both go off. The first one, you know, creates a small hole through it. You can see it puff as it just begins to come back at you again. The second one, even larger, just as the whole form just kind of breaks in half. Feathers and debris and, and rot just go flying everywhere. A triumphant little victory riff, and that's my mm. turn. All right. Tens Veta. Tens is going to take a step. Uh, no, he's not. He can't. Never mind. I'm a liar. He's going to bonus action uh, aim. Why and can't then, he? Because he's going to bonus oh. action aim. Okay. And then murder this scarecrow behind him. Or at least attempt to. 20. And he gets his sneak attack because he aimed. Which I believe is... Three, let me check. Aimed with the sun sword. I just imagine like it's a Babe Ruth thing where he just points at it first and then is like. <laughs> uh, wow, that's a terrible. And then another D8 for the thunder. Oh, the thunder! So he takes 14 points of radiance and another 7, so 21 points of damage. As he just turns and like coldly like his cheeks barely even rattle as he just proceeds to just spin and stab into this thing and that's his turn well, what was the damage total I'm sorry 21 yep still up but the uh yeah you watch that bit you know again bits of those feathers just go flying burning in the air as they do from the sun sword uh, the creature still just barely hanging on All right, but it is uh, enough that it is going to attack you. Hey, to piss it off, Chuck. Uh, is a 20? Yes. You should make a wisdom saving throw. I will reaction uncanny dodge to cut that in half. Okay, so seven so. points of damage cut in half. Two, to three, three or four. Okay. Three. And then wisdom save. And then con save. Cool. And the second strike misses. It is the saga's turn again. I swear to God, if we're in 20 foot radius, I'm gonna lose it. Hmm. I only have. I mean, none of you, points. none of you moved. Literally, none of you moved. <laughs> but just fireballing's not very fun. That's not true. And we're gonna take out another fan favorite. As from that misty ground, where the fire has cooked everything, suddenly this greenish, noxious gas just begins to pour up out of it. I need all of you to make constitution saving throws. Ducky, get plus three. Oh! 23. Also 23. Should have taken infernal constitution. <laughs> That's an eight. Infernal constitution is very good. It is such a sleep dome. I slept on feet. As you all take... Oh. Uh, 26 points of poison oh. damage. I'm unconscious. And Cole is no longer large. Is it halved oh. if we saved? It is halved <laughs> if you saved. That, ah, oh, fuck, I was gonna do something so cool. That's what you thought. I thought. As that green cloud that forms around you, despite that as you begin to choke and vomit as it fills your lungs, it still just hangs heavy in the air, thick and blinding.
And with that, Cole, you're up. Actually, I'm going to, uh, she's going to move, actually, which I think is, your booming blade go, is off, right? Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's, she's, she's mm-hmm. going to, she's going to come down here. And she's going to land her very broken skull, actually. She's going to land her fucking skull. Like, <laughs> <laughs> How many times have I gone unconscious in this campaign? Way too many. Yes. One too few. (laughs) Cole. Oh, man. (sighs) Heal or let tens die? Let tens die. No. All right. Um, first off, I'm going to take myself out with this. Uh, it's miasma. I guess you. Yeah, it. I mean, if we're being if we're being pedantic, it's really the start of your turn that the poison damage hits. But you guys are one, two, three, four. You guys are all right in a row. So, tens isn't even really down yet, right? If he heals me. Yeah. Oh, that's what I'm gonna do. I, I'm so tired of his tens, and I <laughs> grab him by his shirt again. Mm-hmm. It, wake up! Eh, cast cure wounds. <laughs> uh, nice. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm casting it again, but this just has uh, to consume the spell slot. So how many? Two, five? Yeah. Poison, da- poison damage is going to hit me again, and I guarantee you it's going to be more than five damage. That's all I got, buddy. I've been, that is uh, how would the dice be? I'm going to use the rest of my movement to go right up on Baba and go, Hello, love. <laughs> Adorable. <laughs> And your little dog, too. <laughs> and your little tiefling. <laughs> My favorite appetizer. I don't Once we finish I the scarecrow, the flying monkeys show up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot about the monkeys. Give me a sec. <laughs> if I only had a brain. Uh, Ash. Oh, I'm stupid. And is going to go ahead and move out of the cloud of death. Um, death cloud. And then is going to take aim at this uh, scarecrow. And you see With that. With disadvantage. This area is heavily obscured. Okay. Um, but yeah, you see the, the smoky blue ice energy kind of. It almost, it almost looks like if I'm Elsa from Frozen and the frost is forming. Because um, I need to come up with a better <laughs> something than that, but that's what came into my brain right now. And I need to roll that at disadvantage. <laughs> there goes a nat 20. Oh, Lord. But a 16 still hits. So it's going to be... Let her go. <laughs> oh, no. It's going to be three damage on the first one. And a nine on the second. Uh, did you roll the attack for the second one? Yeah, I rolled that at disadvantage. If you got a nine for the attack. Yeah, the nine was the attack. Oh, the nine was your attack. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, so that first strike, you're trying to fight. It's it's difficult to see. It's almost hard to tell which the scarecrow from Tenzveta, but you take a guess. <laughs> I'm on the floor. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, and, <laughs> right. And uh, you do hit the, the first one manages to hit. You see bits of a uh, you know, puff of uh, a cloud of insects or smoke or something on the other end. So you hope that wasn't Tenzveta. Durango. Do I though? Uh, coughing and choking, Durango runs through the uh, the cloud. But as he does, his his left hand is like just just flying across the fretboard, like you expect it might catch fire. Just moving with superhuman speed. The notes are barely intelligible. 
um, the whole time, like his hedgehog starts to glow faintly and it grows more intense and more intense. And there's like a little bolt of energy dancing up and down the fretboard. Uh, he levels it towards, uh, towards Baba Lasaga and lets loose a giant bolt as he casts, uh, Ralthim Psychic Lance. Nice. Mm. Mm. Sexy. Oh. The it's DC intelligence. 15 intelligence save. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. Got bad news. She's got a great intelligence. It's an 18. As Durango emerges from the cloud and he's playing this riff, he Mm. strikes a very dramatic pose. And he bears um, an uncanny resemblance to Bowie from Labyrinth, if if you know what I mean. Like it's (laughs) maybe it's the lighting, maybe it's prestidigitation, but it's it's enough to distract a, a hag anyways. And as that imposes a 1d6 uh, subtraction from that saving throw. Yeah! <laughs> that was... Nice. Oh, no! Oh, no! Ah, no! <laughs> no! No! Lucky that shit. Lucky it. Lucky it now. Hey, let's roll damage. Um, so I only subtracted a 1, right? So I still I still passed, yep. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's half yep. damage. And none of the other lovely effects. What was that? What was that? What did you just use? That was um, the reaction from from Muse. Sorry. Yeah, that was the yeah. Glad that was great. Cool. Loved it. Never mind. That was fucking hot. That's what that was. That was a whopping eighteen damage on a seven d six roll. So 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 nine points. I'm gonna take it back to dice dice school, man. And all over the place tonight. All right. Cloud kill still up. Hope you boys got some tricks. That was my spell slots. <laughs> Hit it. All right. That's all I can do. Tens Veta. Uh, from the ground, Tens will cast Kinetic Jaunt. And then use half of his movement speed to get up. And Kinetic Jaunt makes it to where I can't take uh, attacks of opportunity. So I'm going to go punch the shit out of this woman with a sun sword. A 27 hits. Uh, and then because he is there, I get this. And a D8 from the booming blade. So we're looking at 23 points of damage. As he just kind of like, as his eyes open up, as he's shaken awake, he just kind of, and he just immediately almost like lightning comes from his bag, kind of shocking him in the ass as he jumps up and and just goes over and smacks her in the side of the head. Twenty-three points, and that's his turn. Beautiful. Between the fire, fireball and the gas and us not moving, we really all should be dead. I'm like, that should be a thing, right? Yeah, it's still early. <laughs> Scarecrow's going to rush up to you, Tenzveta. Okay. It is going to attack you with not one, but two claws. The first one being a 22. Uh, I will disadvantage that with my reaction. Sure, sure you will. Mm. So that's a 10. Nope. Second one is an 18. 18 hits. <clears throat> or, oh, it's very spicy eight. And we will reaction cut that in half to four. So I am down to one hit point. Okay. And make a wisdom saving throw. You guys are getting real lucky with these wisdom saves tonight. Let me tell and you. The con save for kinetic jaunt keeps it up. Okay. Baba the Saga is just going to look at the two of you and say, <laughs> I'm sorry I couldn't hear you through all the fog. As it just moves 10 feet over. I'm just going to go ahead and oh. close it now. And. 
I think, is that an action <laughs> or a bonus action? Don't like that. Oh, hey, right did she... There. Hold on. She needs to make a con save on that attack. Let's see if she keeps it up. Uh, what, 13? Oh, no, uh, uh, 11? I think... How much did I do? 23? You did 20, 23, right? Yeah. Yeah, so 11. Come on, baby. Drop it. Fuck you! <laughs> so 22? Tins is destined to die to this bitch. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, and back. What I have to remember here: cloud kill. Oof. No, doesn't uh, doesn't take anything. Beautiful. Uh, and then for with cloud kill up, she is going to cast fireball. <laughs> that's gonna be nice. No, don't be. She wouldn't be. Murder me. You? No. <laughs> Why do I want to murder you? <laughs> ah, beautiful. Lightning bolt. I need Cole Maven and Durango Fortescue to make dexterity saving throws. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, that's that's an 18. All right. Two successes are 18 to 21. So 21, half damage. Actually, because you have your plus three. Right. Which is good, because mm -hmm. that was really good. So 15 points of lightning damage to both of you. As through the fog, a bolt of lightning just arcs through that greenish cloud, slamming into both of you. No, we didn't have to come here. <laughs> Your character was the one that wanted to come here. That's not true. This was and me. Cole, this one was me. Oh, was this Cole? Cole, I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Eight. Love it. You love to see it. Mm -hmm. Another 23 points of poison damage. Cole is sleeping. Ash. Oof, 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 oof. Uh, well, first things first, we're gonna use my movement to duck around the cloud, maybe? maybe. Oh, I'm using the ruler. Gonna duck around the cloud, get in a nice straight line here. Still shooting through it, so you still have this. Yeah. Where did you? I don't even see where you put yourself. I'm on the. Oh, never mind. I see it now. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. I don't know. I just wasn't showing up. I had to click off or something. Okay. Um anything you could anything you do could be the one that ends it. Yeah. We're gonna we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna blast it. We're gonna <laughs> two Eldritch blasts. Thirteen Thirteen misses. Second Eldritch blast. Fuck me. Natural one. Eight misses. Yeah, it's, it's it's tough to see through the obscured clouds. So you're trying to fire through it, and you just you, they just kind of go wide and, and off into the distance. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's that's my okay. turn. <laughs> Durango, make Don't a save. con save. Yep. Ooh, no infernal constitution, but you still made it. Yeah. Oh, I uh, should. Half damage? You got it. That's, uh, uh... So, eight. Eight damage? Eight points of poison damage, yep. Okay, fantastic. 
That uh, that one point made all the difference. <laughs> that was really a really poor roll. Um, yeah, Durango is going to flee a little further this time. <laughs> and yeah, continue blasting. Blast, blast. Uh, nice. A crit. Yes. <sighs> Please drop that fucking cloud. Please drop that fucking cloud. Followed by a thirteen. So damage on the crits. That's fourteen. And the second one is another ten. Twenty-four altogether. Fail this conk mm. save, fail this conk save, fail this conk save. Yeah, fail you better believe, you better believe the Ranko's going to impose his d6 on this. That's not going to help even if she gets the No, nah, it won't, six. damn it. I just can't. It's all I got, boys. She just frowns through the fog at you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tens, Veta. I need you to make a constitution saving throw, but I have one hit point, so I'm not going to. I'm just going to fall unconscious. Beautiful. <laughs> well, when you know, you know. Ash, through that green fog cloud? Yeah. One of those scarecrows just comes barreling out. Of course it does. Uh, first attack is a two. Misses. Yeah. Next, second one is a... 20. I need you to make a wisdom saving throw for me as you take seven points. Fail. Eight points, sorry. On the wisdom saving throw. Eight. And you are, thank you. Thank you for being the yeah. one. And you are frightened. That means I can't this, run forward, Yeah, right? this creature just darts out of the, out of this green abyss. You watch your friends begin to fall this hag just twisted and gnarled inside, just laughing maniacally as this wicked creature just comes and slashes at you. So yeah, you can't willing move, willingly move any closer. Uh, you have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while the source of fear is within line of sight. And that is going to bring us back to Baba. Oh, Baba. Oh, Baba, what are we gonna do? Just, it's it's time to mop the floor. I think she is just going to laugh uh, again. And we are going to... Move here. And... Magic Missile on Ash. Well, are you going to take that attack of opportunity? Cole's down. Oh, he is? Yeah. yeah. Ah, shit. I forget. All right, you take uh, nine points of force damage. Okay. As these three balls of, like, green energy just come flying out from around the scarecrow and slam into you. She's just laughing maniacally at this point. <laughs> what? Good fun you've all been I love a little morning exercise before breakfast Cole make a death saving throw for me uh, alright oh, so that close that was so <laughs> close so close it's a success a success. Ash. Um. Freaked out. Ash is going to do his reactionary thing where he 
throws his hands out and frostbite. DC 15 constitution save. And four points of cold damage. Uh, that's enough to kill a scarecrow. So, uh, yeah, as that scarecrow just, just freezes in place, you're just reactionary to the fear. Cast out that frostbite, and the, the, the uh, liquid ground just shoots up like a spike, like a... Anybody that lives in Buffalo knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's like it's like the lake effect. The lake like... effect, exactly. Thank you. That's I couldn't think of it. <laughs> where where the, their ice is just, like, spiking off vehicles and stuff. Exactly. That was for Liz. Liz, Liz gets it. Um, all right, is that end your turn? Um, so I, I, this to me, this looks like a hut. Did Pablo Saga go in the hut? No, just just ignore the hut, would you? Pablo well, Saga in the hut. I, I can't see because there's walls there, so oh, did I put walls there? Yeah, yeah, yeah there are oh. walls there. So, can't uh, there you go. Oh, so it's just yeah. the only map I had for this area. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Okay. You guys are um, fighting in the field, though. And... Yeah, nope, that'll end my turn. I ain't got no bonus action stuff left. Uh, you're no longer frightened, by the way. Just, which is a plus. Um... Yep, nope. Got nothing. All right, Durango. All right, so Durango is going to run up side Cole gonna kneel down and grab him by the boots and try and pull him out of this out of the cloud like towards the uh the northwest uh okay and with him safely out of the uh, the poison he's going to launch into a really sweet comforting uh melody on his mandolin and cast cure wounds at the third level okay So that's 19 okay. plus uh, more, that might be modifier. more that might be more than Cole has ever healed anybody <laughs> I don't have a level <laughs> three <laughs> uh, so that's 23 points altogether oh good sweet baby Lathander sweet baby Lathander of course as Cole comes to his feet Durango takes a minute to snap his fingers and clean him up with prestidigitation get them all squared away and I don't know. I'd argue turn. I'd argue that's you Durango he was already looking like a real snack <laughs> <laughs> yeah well he doesn't share so we got to take care of this <laughs> all right that's uh, that's my turn well uh, get behind Cole of course <laughs> yep um Tenzveta make a uh, death saving throw for me do I automatically take two failures for being inside the cloud at the top of my turn uh, I'm gonna say no, because okay. you're not breathing. I lost two anyway. Wow. Bruv. <laughs> oh my god, controlling it! I hit the button. <laughs> All right. Well, that's no fun. And I am going to fireball. Uh, no, again, you know, fireballs just. I mean, sure, I could, you know. But instead, the fog starts to dissipate. Uh, Durango, as she casts uh, this this glowing ball of greenish black energy. Just slams into you. Jesus. And I need you to make. Uh, I'm sorry, just 23 hit. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can I impose disadvantage on that? Mm, no. Not a melee attack. Oh, okay. Uh, so Durango, you take. Oh. 19 points of lightning damage. <laughs> Joke's on you. I only have one hit point. <laughs> <laughs> so you can keep that 18 damage. Beautiful. Total vibe. 
as Durango, <laughs> after bringing up Cole, now falls unconscious. <laughs> but Cole, it's your turn. We're never gonna hit this bitch if we just keep picking each other up. <laughs> I don't think there's any healing left to go around. Mm. Tens, you're out. Yep. And Durango's out. Durango's out. You know out. the right choice. Did she get rid of the cloud kill? Cloud yeah. kill's gone. Huh. Eh. Well, that's nice. At least, I guess. I have to. I don't have a choice. Okay. Um... You guys re make it really hard to smite. You know that it just is like near <laughs> impossible to smite with this group. Oh, what? You're gonna complain about how many spell slots you have, bud? No, no, no. no. <laughs> I have more spell slots that. than Durango does. <laughs> uh, Durango, get yourself up, mate. And so, uh, yeah, we'll do this at a second level. Wow. Tens of down with two death saves gone. Sorry. Oh shit, he's that's right, it's two death saves. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can I change my mind? Go for it. Okay. Alright. Only yeah. because I don't want Chuck to have the satisfaction of being able to bring another character in. I'm not <laughs> You're just afraid of getting killed tomorrow night, be honest. <laughs> If I know, I mean, trust me, if I'm going to kill all of them, I'm going to do it with a fireball and make it work. All right, so oh, Tens Veda gets 11 points of healing. Sorry, jeez, don't have to be so upset about it. You Is cost she... me three turns now. <laughs> Ash. I made you big and you hit things. What do you want from me? Yeah, I, 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 I couldn't get to the thing that was important. <laughs> <laughs> you could have. You could have just walked away. It's not like they're going to hit you. <laughs> three advantage uh, attacks of opportunity. No thanks. Three you, sir. attacks of opportunity against your AC of twenty-two. They got. They've been hitting. They had a. Well, they had Bane. I don't have an AC of twenty-two. Fight. I have an AC of eighteen. They had Bane. They were Bane. I can't even Just tell if this. Away. I can't even tell if the two of them arguing is in character or not anymore. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's gonna be a twenty-four for my first Eldritch Blast. 20, twenty-four hits. For five points of damage. Okay. Second attack is f a fucking eleven. Eleven misses. Um, and I will move. I just I. Now that mm. everybody's up over there, I'm gonna move back over here, <laughs> and that'll be my turn. Beautiful. Durango. I don't get to say this to you often enough. But if you would do me the honor of rolling the most gorgeous of death saving throws. My friend, you have come to the right person for death saves. Uh, straight <laughs> D20, right? Yeah. Oh, boy. So listen. That is... <laughs> does this count as an ability check? <laughs> it... Death saving no. throw is a saving throw. Yeah. Hmm. Shit, okay. <laughs> that is your first failure. <laughs> One down. <laughs> Ten Zveta. All right, well, I'm up. Uh, and uh, we're going to teleport to the other side of Babala Saga, which is off the map, because I am not about to get in another AoE. <laughs> okay. And uh, we'll I'm going to We'll just do this. I'm going to stab her. She needs to make a wisdom saving throw again. Uh, why? Uh, from my fear effect. Oh, from, from my tele tele your teleport, yeah? Yeah. This may surprise you. Uh, she okay. succeeds. Uh, 25 to hit. Uh, 25 blade. hits. Booming blade. Jesus H. Christ. Six radiant and two thunder. Six radiant and two thunder. So eight total. Mm-hmm. That's okay. it. As he just kind of like, as he 
takes that breath in, kind of coughs for a second before he <laughs> disappears into a, uh, like a cloud of snow reappearing behind her and just like stabs directly into her. Just blood all over his face. Blood, mud, disgusting. <laughs> Pathetic. And she turns to you and uh, finger down. I know. It would yeah. be funny, though. It would be funny. It would be. Uh, well, I mean, we can throw another blight. I have 15 hit points, buddy. Right. You're just going to keep me down. That's it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Make a constitution saving throw for me. Good news. I have 11. My bad. Even at half, I can't survive that. Right. I'm unconscious, JD. Even at half, I can't survive it. Cool. <laughs> God. Chat knows what you need to do. <clears throat> Chat, what does what does Cole need to do right now? Revive Durango. Or Durango ain't got shit. Hoe. Don't don't revive Durango. <laughs> Oh my god. Um, Cole is going to look at Baba La Saga. <laughs> Waggle a finger. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh man. And look at Durango. And look at Baba La Saga. I gotta clip that. <laughs> I gotta chat where it's not even us. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, I gotta do. Uh, crap. I walk over to Durango. <laughs> <laughs> Just you, go hit her. Just uh, go hit her. Let him. Sing. Uh, you just make this, you make this so difficult. Okay, fine, it fine. Was, it was Durango Fortescue, and you were a vengeance paladin. I know, but it's, uh, fuck yeah, I gotta do it. Um, I'm gonna, on my way walking to her, uh, I'm gonna have my finger out and point at her. I'm like, oh. you don't know the enemy that you just made. I will <laughs> hunt you down until you are nothing. And I'm gonna use my channel divinity. I've got tingles um, all down. Um, and uh, with a bonus action, I'm gonna use Vow of Enmity. Uh, enmity. Oh, okay. So, uh, so I gain advantage on attack rolls against the creature for the next minute. And, okay. And I pull out, pull out the spear, and let's go. And uh, charge in shield first to kind of push her back. And but right behind with the spear from behind the shield. Come on, net twenty. That's a twenty-three to hit. Twenty-three hits. That's a four. All right. So ten right. points of damage. Um. Smite. First or second level. First level. For another eight points of damage. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Pull back and just like Cole is just like you know like pissing. Pull back straight back out forward like some some shit out of three hundred. That's another twenty three to hit. Another twenty three to hit. Yeah. Another 10 points of damage. Did, didn't we just do this? I feel like. So so the first strike with the spear, right? It catches, it's, it, it slams into her. She kind of looks at you. <laughs> that that divine energy courses through and the face changes a bit. Uh, what? The second one comes back through and stabs into her. And you can see for a moment, she was staring at you just like, Anger in her eyes as the spear catches through her. While the and that spear wound... is... yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, you go ahead. While the spear is still inside of her, and like, I'll show you what. Hit it again. Divine Smite, second level. Come 
Can you, um, is that, can you do that twice? You can do it on every single hit. Okay, good. Okay. 3d8 for a second level. Yep. Uh, so... I'm just going to throw in the extra d8 here. For 19 nice. extra points of damage. 19 extra damage, yep. So as the as that spear comes back, a bit of sun peeks through the clouds, and you can see it reflect and light the entire tip of the spear aglow as it slams into her chest again. She... Oh, no. <laughs> just, <laughs> as, as the whole, like, all of her she begins to wither like a rotten tree in place as she just kind of freezes contorted and broken before all of her branches begin to fall off. And as you stand there victorious, Baba La Saga defeated, your friends lying face down in the muck, that is where we will pick up next week. Bleeding gracefully, could I add? Bleeding like... gracefully. Well, <clears throat> Thank you, everybody, for what a what a great time uh, that was tonight. Thank you uh, for sticking around. Uh, thank you for everybody. I saw a lot of elf eggs being used. If you haven't used them or if you guys are seeing them get accumulated down the bottom, make sure you use them. We give away a very nice set of dice for nothing uh, in every stream. And every uh, stream, you get a chance to give yourself an extra raffle ticket. We draw that once a month. We do it all the time. I usually try to avoid repeat winners. You get a really good shot of getting them as long as you stay on top of it. So... Thank you for being a part of that. Thank you to Foundry. Thank you to Forge. Thank you to Tabletop Audio. Ryan, where do you want to go tonight? Where are we? Where are we raiding? Oh, I'm rolling. Let's let's get this. Well, uh, you killed you killed my my hag. You killed my hag. Oh, why didn't the? Uh, no, I don't want to say roll one d twenty. I want to roll one d twenty. Why don't you hit the button in the corner? Because that would make sense. Uh, <laughs> that is a three. And that will be bringing us to, uh, let's see, a glitter explosion. First time okay. ever playing D and D tonight, so we're gonna be raiding a first time ever D and D. Let's get loud. Nice. Yeah, love that. So thank you everybody for hanging, uh, hang out. Thank you for sticking in there. Let's go make some noise, and we will see hopefully all of you tomorrow night. <laughs>